to make it for or with bridesmaids. Yeah, bridesmaids. Your ten year old, your thirteen yeah. year old. I think it's gorgeous. Um, one lady has put on social media when because she bought the pattern last time mm -hmm. and she made them and then bought a tulip plant oh. and gave it in the bag. Oh, which nice. Was a really lovely oh, idea. nice. It's gifted. Yeah. That's lovely. I like to make a bag to gift rather than then it's too. a double whammy, isn't Me it? Too. Double whammy. Because I'm useless at wrapping presents. Oh, no, I love a wrap. Oh, I love wrapping presents. Where were you in December? Were you? I've told you, I'm going to set up shop outside. Yeah, do it. I Whatever you charge, love it. just take my money. It's you get all the fabric, you get your pattern as well. £28.99. This is Liberty. This is Liberty. Really, really good value. And then this last version. Now, this is a bit cool, actually, because this is, this is William Morris. Okay. You've got... Now, it's not... What's it called, this? It's not... Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Sewing Street. It is wonderful to have your company. I'm Stuart Hillard. This is my new shirt. I, is it okay? I'm not sure. No, I love it. And then I've seen it on camera and thought, do I still love it? Do I look like I'm about to do a few rounds of darts? I'm the lucky. It's Stuart Hillard. Um, anyway, it's lovely to have your company um, on this National Cheese Ball Day. I'm not making it up. It's also Banana Appreciation Day. So let's get our appreciation in for bananas. Now, much, much more than that. Let's get on with the show and our early birds. <laughs> Now, our early bird, everybody needs this. Everybody needs this. This is a four metre bundle of cream solid fabric. It's beautiful, Rose and Hubble, great quality. 30 pounds and 32 pence. Not today, let's get straight on with it because this is a fabulous bargain. It's under 25 pounds. It's 24 pound 32 for four meters of Rose and Hubble cream fabric. Here it is. It is a lot of fabric. Now, if you were to buy, for example, something like maybe a strip roll, yeah, jelly roll, strip roll, or a layer cake, something like that. With four meters of cream fabric added in, you could make a queen size quilt or a king size quilt. It, it absolutely expands what you can do with your pre cuts or maybe some half yards, absolutely exponentially. Lots of you multi buying this. What a brilliant option for backing a quilt. <laughs> this is. Wild. Uh, normally we do smaller bundles, four meters. This is amazing. Look, here we go. All of this, all of this. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's all twisted up. 
Oh, it's like trying to fold a fitted sheet. It's nigh on impossible. Look, all of this, it's still going strong. Absolutely amazing deal for under £25. Now, Rose and Hubble, beautiful quality cotton fabric, high thread count, uh, got a beautiful smoothness, gorgeous kind of luster to it as well. Brilliant as a background for appliques. This is your background fabric for piecing. You know, I go to cream, ivory, these sort of lovely light creams all the time for country style projects and, you know, Christmassy projects, whatever it is. Cream always seems to do the trick. Also absolutely fantastic for things like your bag linings and um, backing cushions, quilts, table runners. I mean, what a brilliant buy. Also, of course, you can dye this fabric. You could do shibori, a little bit like my shirt, this is shibori. You could um, do things like tie-dye. You could use it as a base for embroidery, for beading, for painting, ink tense pencils. You name it. It's so versatile. That's why everyone who's checking out is checking out multiple quantities. It's absolutely going wild this morning. Let me say a few good mornings. Claire, good morning. Stuart Noel. Pam, good morning, lovely. I love the shirt. Thank you, my darling. Me too. Ryan's got in touch. Good morning, Stuart. How are you? How are you? Loving the shirt. Uh, 180. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheeky. Susan says, morning. It's a blue shirt. What's not to like? Well, exactly. Every time I go shopping, Charlie says, oh, what have you bought? A blue shirt. How unusual. <laughs> Mo says, morning, handsome. How's all the new uh, Bairns, uh, pleased to have you back. Thank you, darling. We actually finished lambing yesterday. Our last two ewes had their lambs. One had a single, one had twins. They're all absolutely doing wonderfully well. We are overrun. <laughs> we are overrun, but they are so bouncy and gorgeous. I'm thinking about calling the twins Charlie and Hannah after our producer and director today. Chris is on floor. Uh, we're having a, a wonderful start to the day. <laughs> They're making little jokes in my ear. Our early bird today, four metres in one continuous piece, Rose and Hubble cream fabric. It's sold out. It's sold out. We'll have to get rid of it. Morning, gorgeous Stuart. Just grabbed my early bird. Wendy, you've got yourself an absolutely fantastic bargain there. Let's start with the menu and see what kind of day we've got coming up. So this first hour, it's fabulous fabrics. I am launching a brand new collection from Macawa. It is super, super cute. It's called Foxwood and it is beautiful. You're going to love it. I've also got some amazing Sanderson fabric and some beautiful panels. Now at nine o'clock, I'm joined by Yvonne Makatamni from Village Fabrics for Impressions of Japan month three. Where is this time going? Where is this year going? I can't believe we're month three already. It's April. Goodness me. Um, that's already on pre-order. If you want to grab the next month, you can do it. If you want to get started with Impressions of Japan, we've also got January and Feb, well, month one and month two available. Now, at 10 o'clock, Adam Brooks is here bringing his own special sparkle with the Sussex seamstress Selmston jacket. It, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. I tried this on this morning. It's unisex. It's really cool, beautiful. Quilters, you're going to love it. Dressmakers, you're going to love it. You can quilt your own fabric. You can use pre-quilted fabric. Um, yeah, fab, you could do patchwork too. 11 o'clock, we've got a brand new launch from Yvonne. It's called Marbled Windows. It's beautiful, fusible applique with a kind of stained glass window effect. It's really lovely. Look at this. It's like the rose window in York, isn't it? And that, remember Blue Peter, the Blue Peter appeal for the rose window. That's taking me about, was that 1984? Uh, you weren't born, Chris, no. Nobody was born apart from me and Queen Victoria. Uh, then at 12 o'clock, Adam is back with the Essential Guide to Pattern Making book. Now, this was a sellout before. If you missed out, today's your chance. Also, Adam is going to be going through all the basics of how to use the block, how to draft darts, how to move darts, how to manipulate patterns. It's going to be a real learning hour. Absolutely terrific. 
Now that's not yet on pre-order, but as soon as it is, I will let you know because I know you're going to want to jump in there because it's sold out before. Um, I will keep you posted on that. Right. Okay. Uh, how to shop. How to shop. Well, there's all sorts of different ways that you can shop with us here on Sewing Street. You can use our app. I've got the app. I often tap it. Uh, you can also go to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. You can call our phone line, 0800 001 4433. UK-based, super helpful. If you've got any questions, queries, uh, just get in touch. But then if you get to the website... Click on Watch Live. You can do exactly that. You can send us a message. You can email us too. We love our emails. You can talk to us through Facebook. We love that as well. Here's that Foxwood collection. Look at this. Look at this. We've got a panel. We've got all the beautiful coordinates. Can you believe the price? The panel is $6.99 for the panel. The half meter price for the Macau is $6.99. This is a bargain. And this is brand new today. We've also got some gorgeous Sanderson fabric, the Southwold collection. Now, I haven't seen this actually by the half meter. We had a beautiful quilt that sold out in moments a few weeks ago. This is the fabric collection. It's delightful. Uh, great price again, £7.99 a half metre for Sanderson. Look at these panels now, the Woodland and Wildflowers collection from Moda. Huge panels, £15.99 a piece. In fact, I might just grab those and just give you a quick flash. These are beautiful, though. I was looking at these earlier and I just thought, how beautiful, how beautiful is this i just think that is stunning absolutely stunning really bold and beautiful there's a black there's a cream lovely isn't it absolutely beautiful i'll show you the cream too these are 15.99 each and i you know me i love a panel i do love a panel look at that absolutely beautiful so this is all coming up. This is all coming up. Now, don't forget, we've got Impressions of Japan from Yvonne Makatamni. Now, you can get month three, which is launching today, but we've also got month one and month two. So if you have yet to get involved, we've got very, very limited quantities of month one and month two. <clears throat> Extra special extras from Yvonne. But we really are at that point where we can't do more after this, I think. So if you want to get Impressions of Japan, it's a 10-month block of the month program. Today's the day to get involved. Loads of lovely fabrics there for dressmaking. It's going to be a good morning. <laughs> uh, Donna says, good morning, everyone. Kirsty says, morning, Stuart. Love Macawa fabrics. They're so soft. I also remember the fire at York Minster. It was my first senior school visit after it. Saw all the burnt timbers inside, all roped off. Every time we go, I look up to see the Blue Peter bosses. Fabulous memory that. Kate says, morning, Stuart. Another bright day. And I remember that Blue Peter appeal too. Just you and me, old enough to remember. Oh, Jenny says, watching until I take my 95-year-old father out for lunch. I say that looks fat. That sounds fabulous. Have a good time. Helen says, morning, Stuart. Love that shirt. I don't watch darts. Oh, I love it. I love darts. Not the same without Jockey Wilson, though. Right, Sanderson Bundle. This is absolutely stunning. Let me show you. Move this out of the way. Now, we've bundled this together. You've got eight half meters here, and this is really classy fabric. If you bought the early bird this morning, the four meter bundle of cream, that would go absolutely beautifully with this. You'd have enough fabric with the bundle and the early bird to make a king sized quilt. And that would be for under 90 pounds to make a king size quilt. It's only 7.99 a half meter. Look at this, look at this one. This is absolute classic Sanderson. Thanks, Chris. You know, plus the cream. That's the, if you got the four meters of cream, it's sold out now as our early bird. But I mean, or you could use white or you could use ecru, you could use ivory, but 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You can see it, can't you? So, I mean, that is a fabulous deal. 63.92, you're getting eight half metres, four metres in total. This is beautiful Sanderson fabric. Absolutely iconic, sort of the epitome of English country house style. English country house style, isn't it? Those kind of rambling roses, that sort of slightly informal or more informal florals. You know, cottage garden, hollyhocks, ro <laughs> excuse me, roses, um, little uh, primulas there as well. It's just those gorgeous, soft, graceful blues. You've got navy in there. You've got a lovely sage green as well. These sort of tendrils and vines, very country house. Even little birds in there as well. Um, this one is absolutely stunning. Love, love, love that. Now, I'd like a shirt in that. A shirt in that would be amazing. We've got these fabrics by the half metre, by the way. Um, super elegant, this one. That's your sort of almost like your chinoiserie, isn't it? Real sort of, you know, if you go and stay in one of those grand country houses that's become a hotel, it's all headboards and wallpaper and big ginger jars turned into lamps and things like that. You know, absolutely gorgeous style. But also lovely, soft, restful colours. This is, you know, an elegant sitting room or a beautiful kind of peaceful bedroom. Absolutely lovely. You've got the pomegranates here as well. Smashing, isn't it? 63.92 for the bundle. We've also got these fabrics by the half meter. Shall we do those right now? So let's start with the roses. I'll just open this out so you can see. So the price is per half meter. Now, I remember in the 80s, 90s, especially in the 90s, Sanderson. Oh, my goodness me. I discovered Sanderson when I got my first house, and that was all I wanted. Sanderson wallpaper and um, furnishing fabric, curtains, blinds, just beautiful country style. And I think wherever you live, whatever your style, you know, who doesn't love to bring a little bit of country into your home? Especially in places like your bedroom, or maybe if you've got a garden room, a conservatory, something like that. It's just lovely, soft and restful. This would also be amazing for a tea dress. Can you imagine kind of fitted bodice and then a flared skirt done in this? If you've got uh, Helen Rhiannon's uh, dressmaking book, if you're getting the dressmaking book today that we've got, lovely fitted bodice. Incidentally, that book has gone on pre-order just. So if you want to shop ahead and get that book, uh, now's your chance. So beautiful. This would also be really lovely for table linen. Can you imagine a lovely crisp ivory tablecloth with maybe um, napkins? You could use bought napkins, just put a wide, maybe an inch wide mitered border on them. Um, or you could edge a tablecloth with this. Or you could make placemats. Half a metre would be enough to do four or probably even six if they weren't too big. OK, uh, next one. Let's go with another big, lovely floral. This N61, i.e. 61. This is very limited stock, by the way. Lovely, isn't it? This would work really well um, as a border print, as a, you know, block print if you're having alternate blocks something like that. It would be a beautiful backing for a quilt, of course. Really special. Also, you could make beautiful quilted cushions, maybe crosshatch quilt them, maybe navy or ivory piping cord around the outside. Just really elegant. Keep it simple with fabrics like this. Um, next up, I want to do this one, which is the sort of uh, single tone, just the blues there, ending four, six, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And the scale of that would be wonderful for shirt making, dress making. The scales, per if I just pop it up against me so you can see, that would make the most beautiful shirt, wouldn't it? 
I just think that would make a beautiful, beautiful shirt. Yes, please. <laughs> But equally, in quilt making, bag making, stunning. Right. Next up, ending 2-8. These are the hollyhocks. Now, this for me almost works as a stripe. Hear me out. Hear me out. Do you see the linear? So, for example, and the rows are kind of offset, but do you see you've got that? regular stripe there but it is also a floral so you can create real lovely movement in your quilts with a fabric like this also this would be super cool for doing something like um, you know the easy stack quilts where you do the four squares cut from the same bit of print and then rotate them or stack and whack things like that these a lot of these fabrics would be really good for stack and whack uh, this next one this ends 9.5. Nice, deep, sort of inky navy ground. Oh, nine metres left. That's all. Nine metres left. Steph's got in touch. She says, I adore Sanderson fabric. The big roses fabric reminds me of two skirts my dear mum made me years ago. I have a photo of me wearing one on holiday in Italy. Ah. Oh. Lovely, lovely. I think that's the thing, isn't it, Steph? The, those, especially like the florals, the roses, those fabrics, they evoke such beautiful memories. And especially um, for things like homewares, furnishing, clothing, you know, you get these wonderful memories that come back too. They're just classics, absolute classics. All right, that's that navy. Another navy fabric, this one's super elegant. Um... Ends eight zero. Oh, I'm just going to turn that around. What you've got here is this wonderful again a stripe, a stripe, a serpentine. Do you see? A serpentine stripe, um, classic, elegant, beautiful, beautiful. Love the little birds dotted through the trees. Do you see? Next one, probably my favourite print from the collection, ending 3-0. The, um, lots of you have bought this actually, it's been very popular. That would make a gorgeous dress. Really lovely dress. For a wedding, for something really special. Um, the quilt that we had, and it's sold out in moments, um, made with this fabric collection, was essentially a trip around the world style. So squares, you know, just in concentric on point rows, very simple, almost a sort of blended look. Because obviously these, these fabrics are all kind of all over florals. So you can use them all together without blenders to create more of a blended look. And that looks wonderful with something like Irish chain, double Irish chain, uh, maybe something like Jacob's Ladder, Trip Around the World, any of these sort of quilts. If you want to do the more kind of here's the star, here's the background, mix in something like a soft um, sage green solid, maybe a soft blue, and, or if you want more drama, a navy. You could put white, pearl, cream, ivory, something like that to give a more sort of restful, defined tone to the quilt. But they also work really well as blended fabrics. And then the last one from that collection, ends 9-2, this one's got the pomegranates in it. And pomegranates, is, that's um, especially in wood carving and stone carving, the pomegranate comes up a lot, especially in great country houses and in churches as well. You see pomegranates um, as a sign of fertility. Often seen at weddings as well, or traditional at weddings. Um, yeah, because of all the seeds inside the pomegranate. Yeah, yeah. The other thing you see a lot in carvings at country houses is pineapples, often on staircases or on um, gate posts or entrances, basically, because the pineapples are a symbol of welcome. Yeah, yeah. 
Welcome, I've got a pineapple. Well, that was the thing though. Back in the day, pineapples were so rare and unusual. You could hire a pineapple for a dinner party. You couldn't eat it. You just had it on the table. You can imagine, can't you? I'd go to the dinner party, I'd be halfway through a big slice of pineapple and the host would be like, no, it's only on loan. Oops, Saz. It is delicious, though. Right, let me show you that mega bundle one more time. Oh, lovely. Beautiful, beautiful, classic English florals. Hollyhocks, roses, primroses. Michaelmas daisies, it's all those sort of beautiful cottage garden flowers in these wonderful restful soft blues with a hint of soft moss and sage green, a little bit of gold in there as well, a little bit of tan that you could bring in as an accent colour. Lovely. All from Sanderson, uh, $7.99 a half metre, $63.92 for the full collection. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right. I was teasing you earlier. <laughs> Macawa. Now, we don't often have Macawa fabrics on Zoe Street, so it's a real treat when we do. This, we're going to start off with the bundle. £63. This is an absolutely brilliant deal, actually. You get half a metre for free. Or, in fact, the panel is the same half metre price. So let's say the panel's free. Let me show you the panel. Let me show you the freebie. Show me the panel. I saw some of these panels made up into quilted cushions. I absolutely fell in love with them. Look, you've got Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. You've got, I think these are probably are these blackbirds in ivy. You've got the little fawn. You've got Foxy Loxy. They look like lino cut prints, don't they? You've got the swans. You've got the rabbit. You've got the squidgy and also some songbirds. I don't know, is that maybe, are they maybe thrushes or starlings? Um, each of those squares, I'm just going to measure them by the way, approximately about nine inches square. You've got this extra line around them so you can always trim them up to say 10 inches to use in a project. Absolutely gorgeous. They do look like lino cuts, don't they? Absolutely gorgeous. So you could use these as um, blocks in a quilt, add some piecing, add some borders. You could use each one for a placemat, add on an extra strip, maybe a pocket for your cutlery, quilt it, add the pocket, then bind the edge. Don't add the pocket, then quilt it. You'll never get in that pocket. Wall hanging would be lovely. You could pick your favourites. You could do, I mean, you've actually got eight images there. So you could do two lots of four. You could do two wall hangings, bag fronts, cushions. Absolutely loads you can do with those. So this is your freebie. Let's say this is your freebie. If you buy the bundle, you get that for nothing. And then let me show you these wonderful fabric. You get half a metre of each. So you have got a scenic, look at that. Now, is that a little bit Claris Cliff? It's giving me those vibes, it's the hills, yeah? So you get that, you get, oh, these are gorgeous. Loads of reflectional symmetry in this. So if you love doing things like kaleidoscope quilts or fussy cutting, so many possibilities in a fabric like that. This all, all over floral is divine, sumptuous, so elegant, isn't it? It's not a shouty fabric at all, but there's so much going on the light version, how gorgeous is that? Here's that floral again. This time we've had it in the navy. This is in the light. That is divine. 
I'm thinking about some very, very elegant quilted toiletry bags using this range. Look at the stripe. I could use that forever, <laughs> a stripe like that. Absolutely gorgeous. And then there are three of um, different colorways of this fabric to finish the range off. So you've got it in the blue. You've got, can you imagine all of this for 63 pounds? You've got it in the gray. That is so pretty. And so defined as well. All those images are so clear, aren't they? And then in the cream or the tan. So let me show you this range again. Uh, Heather from Leicestershire says, I have this panel and I made a quilt. I used cream sashing and I hand quilted around the animals. It looks stunning. I always, uh, I always got more fabric for the borders. I also got more fabric, beg your pardon, for the border. Yeah, great idea. Great idea. Uh, oh my goodness, I promised I wouldn't spend. I have enough fabric to sink a ship. Oh, to open a shop, beg your pardon. Could all sink a ship, uh, but, but this range is irresistible. Resistance is futile. Ho hum, Stuart, you'd look good in any shirt. Ah, oh, thanks, Elizabeth. That's really kind. It is a gorgeous range, this, isn't it? And I know what you mean. Sometimes you think, oh, no, that's it. I'm on a fabric diet. And then you go, oh, actually, actually, I need some of that. Because, you know, you, you, you all know about FOMO, don't you? FOMO, fear of missing out. And there is nothing worse than missing out on a beautiful fabric range that you've fallen in love with and you think, we've all done it, we've all been at the show, we've all been in, you know, in a shop, I thought, oh, oh, that's gorgeous, oh, now I've spent enough. And then you spend the next six weeks dreaming about that fabric that you didn't buy. And then you go back and they say, oh, no, it's sold out, it was really popular. You know, because the thing is... If you like a fabric, I dare say lots of other people will like the fabric. It's, you know? Yeah. you got great taste. This is lovely. I mean, you know me. I do love blue. That is perfect. And don't forget, you get all of that. And hello, freebie. Hello, you. Where have you been? You get this. <laughs> Look at that. And actually, as well, it's fair to say that our navy, our copen blue, our um, not federal blue, what's it called? There's copen and there's marine would look good. Slate would look good. Royal. I mean, we've got loads of lovely blues um, here at Sewing Street um, that would tone beautifully with this. Or white or ivory or creep. If you got the cream, if you got the cream this morning, if you got the four meter bundle, our early bird, again, would go beautifully. What a deal. What a deal. Um, all of these fabrics are 6 99 a half meter. So you are saving 6 99 Now that means, of course, that any one of these fabrics could be your freebie. But I think, <laughs> I want to believe that I'm getting the panel for free. Hedgehog. <laughs> Less than 30 of the bundle, by the way, it's flying. Um, oh, fewer than 20. You're going to need to be quick. We've got Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. We've got the beautiful, uh, I don't know, are they starlings? Are they, are they blackbirds? Blackbirds, I think. Um, love the way this has been put together, like a lino cut. Sue in Norfolk says, morning. There's no such thing as too much fabric or too many books. I agree. Uh, tempted by the Sanderson, very classy. Sue in Norfolk. It is classy fabric, isn't it? And horrendously expensive if you want to buy like the furnishing weight, like for curtains and things like that. You can use the quilt weight cotton for light curtains, and especially if you interline them and line them, you know, you, they, they, they work well. But if you buy the furnishing weight of Sanderson, oh, eye-wateringly expensive. Our quilt weight cotton for Sanderson, 7 99 a half metre. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, but yeah, you've got these gorgeous images. I love the variety. You've got some which are very sort of naturalistic scenes, some which are more stylized in circles. You've got four of these circular images, squirrel, rabbit, deer and birds. They're all in circles. 
And then you've got the scenics, the hedgehog, the fox, the swans, and the birds amongst the oak leaves. So, I mean, you could mix and match them like that, couldn't you? Absolutely beautiful. Jan's got in touch to say, Morning, Stuart. Late today. Lost track of time watching yesterday on Catch Up. Darling, you're here now. We're happy to have you. It's not late. It's only 8.33. I mean, early for a lot of, lot of people. Although, I've been up for four hours now. <laughs> when Yvonne, Yvonne McAtamney, when she came in this morning, she said, oh, it's too early, it's too early. I said, oh, I've been up for hours, Yvonne. <laughs> it's quite late. Anyway, brand new collection, Foxwood. You get your panel. You also get all of these beautiful fabrics. You get eight different coordinates plus your panel. So four and a half meters in total. Love that stripe. Oh, my goodness me. Imagine a binding. Teens left. Low teens left. If you want to get this bundle... $6.99 off the price, which is effectively one of these fabrics for free, or your panel for free. Should we do individuals? Let's do let's start with the panel. <laughs> let's start with the panel. Thank you, Chris. Um $6.99. $6.99 for the panel. We'll pop those details up for you. Eight different images, four in circles. Four that are square, but all of them have been sort of rounded up. About nine inches, just a little over nine inches in both directions. Six ninety nine. Think about the cushions, bags, quilts, wall hangings, table runners, placemats that you could make using these images. And you could even as well, something like this, you could cut out, you could put fusible web on the back, you could cut out the circle... Then you could sort of brodery purse style, applique that to a background and add different elements. You know, be creative. What about cutting through, doing attic windows with some of these images? Loads you could do. More in baskets than we have. What about reverse applique? Prepare your frame with a, maybe a dark circle overlay and a plique. <laughs> so much. I'm going to have to take it out because it's about to sell out. Well done if you got that. Brand new collection from Macauer. It's called Foxwood. Right. Let's go in with this amazing scenic. Um, quarter of the stock's gone already on pre-order. This is fabulous, isn't it? Absolutely fabulous. Um, I love the blues. I love all there's so many different blues in there. You could literally, I mean, almost pick a blue coordinate at random to go with this and it would work. You could also add in something like a rust or a gold or a mustard if you wanted a little accent colour to go with this. You know, kind of like a burnt orange, something like that would be lovely. Or just go all blue. I'll show you what half a metre looks like. You get loads. You get loads. And again, yeah, imagine doing something like stack and whack or easy stack blocks using this. Smashing. Absolutely gorgeous. Been very popular on pre-order. I'm not surprised. It's brand new. It's Macawa. We hardly ever get Macawa in. 6 99 a half metre. We're down to our last four meters is this range going to sell out in its debut hour i think some of the fabrics might the panel has sold out uh, next up can we do that stripe i think the stripe this is for me if there's a no-brainer in this collection it's this whether you like the rest of the collection or not this could be used in so many ways because within the range of course it fits, but, but it's also beachy, isn't it? B 
beach bags, coastal bathroom, you know, I mean, amazing, I hardly need to say this, amazing as a binding, as shoulder straps for a bag, pocket tops, sashing, borders, but also for piecing, don't think, oh, stripe, directional, that's going to make things difficult. Use the fact that there is a direction in this fabric. Cut four squares, sew them together, you know, rail fence blocks. Even the simplest block made with a stripe looks so much more than it is. Beautiful, kind of chalky, lovely chalky colours. And a slight wobble on the line. I love, I love. Yeah, you don't have to worry about how straight am I cutting this. It's two metres left. These are going to sell out. These are absolutely going to sell out. Now, the next one I want to do is that absolutely amazing dark floral. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely amazing, isn't it? It's so beautiful. Um, yeah, what can I say? What do I need to say? I mean, I don't need to say anything, do I? Let's just be quiet. <laughs> it does. It speaks for itself. It's so lovely. It's so lovely. It's going to take this opportunity to open my coffee. <laughs> what on earth have they done? It's like Fort Knox. Mmm. Mmm. Gotcha. Yes. Thank you. Ah, absolutely gorgeous. If you come in really close, can you see that you've got this sort of eucalyptus blue-green in the leaves? And you've also got the softest sort of antique rose pink in the flowers. It's so subtle. As a fabric, it reads as a blue fabric but if you get in there you can see that kind of really lovely blue green in the leaves and that soft rose pink so this is exciting when it comes to choosing coordinates or if you want to go beyond blue you you absolutely can this fabric's flying out how much do I have left Hannah oh two and a half meters check out your baskets please don't just let it linger. Did you have to let it linger? Right, that same fabric, but in the light version. Um, children's clothing. Again, a shirt. I'm sorry to keep going on about men's shirts, but I'm seeing so many, so many possibilities here for dressmaking. Uh, and it is wonderful quality. Very smooth, very high thread count. I mean, the quality is exceptional and it's sort of cotton that feels like silk almost it's got such a smooth finish the print quality is incredible I mean the amount of detail can you see this the sort of crispness and you can see the size against my finger now but I mean it's just amazing Macawa now Macawa I was working with Macawa in the late 90s and they've always been, I mean, you know, I was on, I was on release from school. I was on work experience. Um, but I remember even then, their fabrics were gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Of course, UK based and a wonderful team. And actually, more or less the same team now that I was working with in the late 90s. They are still there. It is a real kind of family concern. And I love that. I love that. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful colours. And again, you've got that almost like a soft putty uh, greyish in there as well. A little bit of soft grey, a little bit of soft blue green. Very, very pretty. Very pretty. But again, as I say, soft and quiet, not shouty. Now, next up, I'm going to grab one of the perhaps more, well, I can't really call it a coordinate, but you know what I mean. Sort of single colour. This ends 4-7. I just think this is charming. Absolutely charming. A good all over print. Perfect for your patchwork. This is the fabric that you sort of team with something like this, you know? So you've got that contrast. 
We'll get to that one next. Yeah. I think this would be gorgeous if you were doing something like, if you wanted to do a single fabric for a table runner or placemats, I would do like sort of more or less rectangular with just nicely rounded corners. Bind the, in this, cross hatch quilting, Maybe do it once and then stitch again quarter of an inch away so you've got a double cross hatch and then bias cut chalky stripe right, for a binding. And I would pick this fabric or the cream or the grey because this has got a lovely, it's soft, it's gentle, it's interesting but it, there's not too much going on, do you know what I mean? Morning, lovely Stuart. Long time no see. I know it's been ages. Um, just bought the fabric, but uh, is the pattern for the lovely boat quilt available to buy? It's gorgeous. Oh, do you know, I hadn't even thought uh, such of, yes, <laughs> well spotted. This is on pre-order. This is from Village Fabrics from Yvonne McAtamney. The pattern is available. It's called Sailboat sailboat and actually the chalky stripe perfect for the border yeah absolutely and um you know whether you use other fabrics from the foxwood or you could use your scraps but i mean that stripe very nautical very nautical very nautical he's saying i wish i wish we had a pattern for it it's on pre-order <laughs> Thank you very much for that question, by the way. You keep me in check. Right, this next one. Oh, lovely. Ending 9-2. Uh, again, look. You've got your uh, hedgehogs. Um, we, we were getting things ready in one of the barns a couple of weeks ago. Because once the lambs have got about a week or so old, we move them with their mum into what we call the kindergarten, which is like a big so that all the lambs can socialise together, the mums can get together and play. It's great fun. It's so much fun to just sit and watch them. Anyway, so we were getting this ready and we had to move some bales of straw and we woke, well, didn't really wake actually, she barely sort of moved, um, a gorgeous little hedgehog who was hibernating in the barn. So we very, very carefully moved her, put her back over with straw and left her to, I mean, actually, to be honest, it was a really lovely warm day and I was surprised. She wasn't just like, oh, Oh, is it that time already? Let's get going. But anyway, I think she's still snuggled down. But um, hopefully we'll see her again in a few weeks. Right. So you've got hedgehogs. You've got rabbits, birds, uh, fawns. You've got birds in there. Um, wonderful uh, mirror images here. So we call this the belly of the butterfly. So this is where the, if you like, the body is and then the wings. So if you want to cut, fussy cut, so applique, hearts cut out, you know, literally wherever you cut down that line. Or if you wanted to cut things like diamonds or hexagons or circles or really even squares, rectangles, you know. You've got these wonderful images. If you're a card maker, you can include things like this on your cards as well. Really lovely. I've only got 10 meters of that one left though. So that's been a very popular. Right, I think I have that in a second colorway. I do, here it is. This is the light background ending seven five. Again, lovely crisp images. Lovely crisp images. Um, you could do, this would be really nice actually to make mug rugs with. We don't have them now, but do you remember yesterday, if you're watching yesterday, we had the Bozal mug rug. We had the circles and we had the rounded corner rectangles and there was space for coffee, tea and a biscuit, which I approve of. But I'm just thinking that these would work really well because the sort of size of the images do you see here, you've got your rectangle or your circle. And again, I would just do a binding either in the stripe or something like, something like this 
would work really well as a binding fabric. You know, that kind of, just again, nice and quiet, soft, gentle, and on the backing as well, gorgeous. Or that would be really nice as a binding around the edge. So many different things you could do with these fabrics. Also lovely to hand quilt. Add a bit of quilting around the images. Um, two more. So we've got this silver, one seven, the silver. This is also, I dare to say it, stash this for Christmas. Stash for Christmas. But only because that silver, that silvery grey, is such a popular colour at Christmas. It's the sort of lovely, you know, single tone fabric that just is so useful, so useful. There's nothing Christmassy about the fabric at all, and yet it would fit beautifully, wouldn't it? Love that, love that. And then the last one in cream, and this is such a wonderful kind of warm tan, isn't it really? Yeah, love that. Absolutely gorgeous. What a treat to have Macawa. It's so unusual. I don't know why. They do loads of lovely fabrics. <laughs> right, let me show you. Let me show you the bundle. So I do have these as a bundle. Now, I've just heard from Hannah, our producer, we cannot reproduce the bundle now. So your only chance to get some of these fabrics is in the bundle okay some of these fabrics lots of these fabrics have either sold out or are close to selling out um, don't forget you get that gorgeous chalky stripe you get that scenic you get eight different half meters okay and then to cap it all off you get the wonderful panel eight different images showing British wildlife, hedgehogs, foxes, rabbits, birds, four round, four square, all have this border around them so that you can trim them just outside that and have a little border, or you could trim right inside the line, make them a little smaller, and you're saving $6.99 on the bundle price. It's like we gave you the panel for free. How many bundles do we have left, Hannah? Oh, we're down to our last 12. If these are in your baskets, please check out. You're at, we're at that stage where you could lose them. If you don't check out, these, this range is going to sell out this morning. So if you don't check out your basket, you'll miss out. You know, it always surprises me when we do something like a freebie with a brand new collection because this is the time when I'm like, just take my money, just take my money. You know, I don't need 6 99 off, I need this now, you know. But you are making a 6 99 saving, so that's wonderful. It's very keenly priced at £63. It's only 6 99 a half metre, 6 99 for the panel. Do we have the panel available on its own, Hannah? No, nope, that's gone. So that you can only get in the, in the bundle. This one you can only get in the bundle. This one you can only get in the bundle. I think this one, you know, this is very close to selling out. Loads of them are oversubscribed. This is why I say check out your basket because they'll disappear. We'll come back to that and see what it's doing in a couple of minutes. I want to go back. I gave you a little tease right at the start of the morning with these Moda panels. Uh, absolutely stunning. I love the scale of this panel because it's unapologetically bold. It's beautiful. The colours are not garish, bright, in your face. They are warm country colours. This is stunning, look. Absolutely stunning. Can you pull any further back? 
Charlie. That's as far back as you can go. Look, it's a lot of panel, isn't it, for $14.99. I'm just going to hold it up, actually. In fact, shall I stand in the... No, I'll just leave it. He's got legs. He's got legs. Isn't that gorgeous, though? Absolutely stunning. Now, are you going to... Don't show me from the side. <laughs> uh, now, are you going to layer this quilt it, bind it? That's it. Nothing else. Yeah? Are you going to add some borders? Just fabric borders from your stash? Are you going to do some piecing and add some pieced blocks? What about an applique border around this? What about cutting this up and doing attic windows? What about using this in a quilted jacket? On the back or down the front? The front, uh, left, front, right, front? Do you know what I mean? Left, front, right, front. <laughs> Do you know? Or a qu quilted kimono jacket, something like that. Loads, 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 loads. You could also actually... I'm just going to fold this. Morning, lovely Stuart. Missed you while you were away. So cheerful, so many ideas, and so inspirational. Julia, that makes me very happy. Thank you. I love it. Well, I get very excited about fabric. But look, can you see how if, if you cut this panel into four, and you could add a border around them you could make four cushions and each cushion would be different you know what i mean so here are your four here are your four cushions do you know what i mean the fact that the image is cut off if you do that doesn't matter at all it's all part of it you know or if you wanted to do like a long bolster cushion or something like that, you don't have to use these panels as panels. Be creative. Push boundaries. Jenny Jackson's watching, talking of pushing boundaries. Morning, Jenny Jackson. Your new puppy looks lovely. <laughs> Is he called Dave? Oh, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. We need lots of pictures and I'm sure we're going to get them. That's our Jenny Jackson. Now, we also have the panel, can't resist, can't resist, on black. Oh, quarter of the stock's already gone on pre-order. Look at the, how can you not? <laughs> really, isn't it gorgeous? The way it makes the colours pop, exactly the same colours in the flowers, they haven't been altered at all. Look, if I just show you here, same colours, but they look so different. They pop more on black, super popular. And again, what about cutting into your panel? What about, what about a table runner? Yeah? You could make two table runners out of this panel. That would make each table runner costing around eight pounds. Add a bit of a border and a backing. No? Don't you think? And what I like to do sometimes, actually, I have a rectangular table. And I mean, I think the most obvious thing with a table runner is down the middle. But sometimes if I've made two table runners, I'll do them across the table and across the table and then have the plates, the four plates on top. So they actually act almost like placemats, but it kind of people opposite share. And you could do that with this, couldn't you? So you could have one there, one there. I mean, just another idea. Love it. Absolutely love it. You're loving this too. It's absolutely flying out if you want to get this panel. I always think it's a bit of a reward for getting up early 
and joining us from the get-go because we have some really special things in 8am shows and not everybody joins us for the 8am so you can often get yourself a bargain you can often get yourself something new a little bit of a sleeper you know something we haven't seen for a while these bit of a top tip. There'll be a lot of people missing out on these. If you've joined us early this morning, well, the early bird catches the worm, doesn't it? Now, shall we just revisit? This is the Foxwood Mega Bundle. Now, I'm going to say most of these fabrics have sold out on their own. So we cannot repeat the bundle. I've got eight bundles left. You must check out your baskets, please. Don't let the fabric linger. It's not fair on the fabric. <laughs> it's not fair on the fabric. So many of these fabrics have now sold out on their own. You get nine half meters. I've been saying eight half meters all along. You get nine half meters of fabric and you get your panel. I was thinking it was four and a half meters including the panel but it's actually five meters in total of fabric because you've got your nine half meters and you've got your half meter cut of panel. Now normally even if a panel is a half a meter you get charged a sort of panel price yeah but this you're literally getting half a meter and you're paying for half a meter in fact you're not paying for this because you're getting this for free you get 6.99 taken off the price which is the cost of this panel you cannot buy this panel now on its own it is sold out the only way to get it is in the bundle for free beautiful isn't it well, if I saw this in a shop, I would expect this to be 9 99 minimum. Even though it's half meter, because it's special, it's a panel, you can just buy this on its own. Well, you can't from us. It's sold out. You've already bought it. <laughs> but these, absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, we need to go for a break. When we come back, Yvonne Makatan is here. It's month three of Impressions of Japan. It's gorgeous. Get ready. I'll see you after the break. Hi everyone, I'm Eva Makatamne. I'm a patchwork and quilter. And what do I do the rest of the time? The rest of the time, I actually own and try and manage village fabrics in the town of Wallingford. How did I start my sewing and journey? Well, I've been sewing since as long as I can remember. I uh, started out dressmaking with uh, my mum and my big sisters and since then I've tried my hand at most things and have finally ended up with patchwork and quilting and I think that's probably due to uh, one of Elna Burns quilt in a day books. Let me assure you, you don't make a quilt in a day but it's been a passion of mine for the last 25 years and I'm still at it, so there's hope for us all. So what do I enjoy sewing? Well, I like to do a bit of most things, to be honest, but my favorite thing is anything to do with my Japanese fabrics. So as you can see, we've moved to a different part of the shop and here we are in another of my favorite corners. And I really enjoy combining the lovely Japanese fabrics with some hand stitching and um, hand quilting. So I've moved to the permanent Christmas room at my shop here. And as you hopefully can tell, this is quite a large shop here. So most of my time is uh, involved in keeping this running successfully. So I don't really have a lot of time for claims to fame. So what I suppose I could say um, is that my claim to fame is actually managing to manage John Scott. Um, I'm sure he'll take that the way it's meant. So um, love you lots, John. My top tip is that children's colouring in books are a really valuable resource whenever you're crafting. You've got nice, clear outlines that can become templates for your applique work or you can transfer them and use them as quilting patterns. I can't draw, but I can create lots of things using bits and pieces from things like children's colouring in books. 
give it a try. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye! Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one p and with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Where is this year going? It's month three of Impressions of Japan with Yvonne Makatamni from Village Fabrics. Good morning, all. <laughs> yeah. Good, Good to see everyone. Seriously, Yvonne, where is this year oh, going? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, uh, it's my, nep uh, my nephew, my grandson's birthday on Friday. Wild. You know, it's just at the time. Yeah, just time is back. flying. And we're already on month three of Impressions of Japan, the absolutely exquisite 10 month block of the month programme from Village Fabrics. Now it's hanging behind Yvonne. Yvonne, this is. Absolutely oh. stunning. Well, thank you. Uh, loads of you on pre-order have already got month number three. Some of you have just jumped in and joined the party and bought month one and two. They are available on the website, but we're launching month three so, now. So, uh, so month one, two and three. So each month there are three panels and the three panels this month, we have some cranes in the grasses. So we have this long panel here. We have Blossom going through some trellis and then we have a stylized flower. Beautiful. I think the main interest this month is possibly the sashing 
It's the fiddly bit for this month. So cool, though. There's but, some folded yeah. patchwork in this, yeah. isn't there? So this gives you another technique to uh, to entertain yourself with in uh, the uh, month. And have you noticed as well, behind the stylized flower, there's sashko yeah. as well, which you're going to work. It's a running stitch. It's easy to do, so soothing, another new skill. So there's applique, there's patchwork, there's folded patchwork, there's sashko, there's embroidered embroidery. details. There's embroidery. Exquisite. So there's just something uh, absolutely keep, every, keep you out of mischief for a, a really little while. Well. Would it keep you out of mischief for a month? No. No. I don't have Not time. No, I don't have time. <laughs> you don't have time for mischief? Yes. Well. Mm. Up, up, up. Say no more. Yep. I'm, Say no more. I'm, I'm, I'm digging a hole. So we'll I'm talk stopping. off camera. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But you must have been busy lambing. Oh, yeah, but we finished yesterday. Ah. Last two ewes had their babies. Oh, so well. We're all, oh. Yeah. Charlie's having a lie-in. All is good. Yeah. All is good. Uh, you can get month three. Now, already well over half the stock of month number three has gone. It went on pre-order. Let me show you. Here it is. So in your pack, you're getting all of your fabrics. So you're getting your background fabric, all of your applique fabrics. And they are the exact fabrics that you see in the quilt. Okay, there aren't any substitutions. You've got your fabric for your folded patchwork. Uh, you're going to need to add in a bit of bond web, a little bit of embroidery floss, um, and that's it. That's it. That is it. A bit of thread, maybe. You yeah. Know, some, um, I, I tend to piece this with a, with a cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, that's literally it. Yeah. And you can build up. Now, you could do one month and you could turn it into a beautiful pillow or a small wall hanging. You could add a little border. You could do several months and create a small wall hanging. Or, as the vast majority of you are doing, each month, come back, get the next month, create now you might be working on month two right now you might have it finished and in the bag you might be saving it until you go on that fabulous cruise in the yeah. summer that one one lady has been posting on facebook and she is doing a uh, lady called dawn mm -hmm. and she's doing a wonderful job on month one she's been embroidering the geisha's Ooh. hair uh, headdress and uh so, yes. Because this really is a quilt you can personalise as well, oh, isn't it? Oh, so much so. So much so. And that's sort of... Uh, I, I love to be able to give people suggestions mm. as to how to change or add. Um, there's many details that you can add in there that we just can't put into a kit no. for you. Um, but if you've got beads, if you've got embellishments, if charms... A, if you're a lace maker, Ooh. you know, there's lots of little opportunities. Mm. I think the... Um, the the net in month t no actually this net in month mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. wouldn't that be lovely as 3d mm. embroidered you know uh, needle lace mm -hmm. and uh, different colors i've only used one color in the sashko in month two mm -hmm. you can use two colors yeah yeah you yeah. could use a variegated thread there yeah, couldn't but you? you depending you can actually stitch it in two different mm -hmm. colors mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know and just, I've put gold French knots on the centre, fine, you know, white ones, mm -hmm. um, sequins, well, it's a bit flashy sequins, some beads perhaps. I'm, yeah. I'm not too much of a sequiny person. No. But, but they, have their, they have their place. They do, and also, you know, make it personal to you. If you really love sparkle, yeah. add it. If you don't like embellishments, you don't have to add them at all. I think it would be lovely in the geisha's hair ornaments if you've got some little charms or little beads to add those so that you actually get a little bit of movement. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because this is a wall hanging. This is not going on your bed. You're not snuggling under this in no, the winter. You're, you're putting this somewhere <laughs> where you, uh, you approach it. Yeah. And you can see the detail as you get closer because it has an imp it has different impacts from from far away. You get the to the total picture 
but as you get closer, hopefully you see a little bit more and you see a little bit more. Absolutely, um, absolutely gorgeous. Now, the details are on the screen for month three. This is for the um, block that I have in front of me, made up of three different panels, cranes in the grass. These are the cranes through the grass. You've got blossoms through the trellis. You've got the stylized flower on a Sashko base. And then your fourth element is your folded patchwork, which divides up the block. Remember then you're gonna make nine of these blocks, all different each month over nine months. And then the 10th month, the final month, is putting it all together with sashing. And then that amazing two-tone border with appliqued blossoms. What a magnificent piece of work to really, you know, each month, something to look forward to, something to work on. Not overwhelming by any means. Um, Yvonne, I know it's always difficult to put, everyone says, how long did that take? But um, rough ballpark, each element or each block. Um... It probably took me nine months to make the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, some blocks come together very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the embroidery for the um, central, if I just do that, for this took a bit longer. Sure. But I reckon if you can't... Maybe four days. Four for days, yeah. Four days, evenings, uh, depending on whether you're hand stitching. Yeah, you might do an hour a day, but altogether roughly about but four yeah, days. Yeah, because some of it is, is quite straightforward. You know, you're putting well, mm. 20 petals on mm -hmm. with centres. So mm. um, that's a, a straightforward afternoon mm. will do that. Mm. And yeah. of course you could, if you wanted to, just get one month, as I say, you could put a border around it. Mm. You could even repeat the blocks and create a small wall hanging, you know, use some of your own fabrics. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I think we've all got our favorite block in Yvonne's quilt. Um, I know you do. I know I do too. Yes. In fact, well, I'm a little torn. I've got a couple of favourite well, blocks. Well, yeah, I, I do as well, to be honest. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm just so pleased the way the, the design has has come together and has balanced itself, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, it's really lovely and super popular. Um, month number three figures or numbers are dwindling so if you're doing this as a block of the month if you've got one and two you need to get three now because next month we may not have any of month three left so i would grab this while you can it's 34.99 everything in there to create your block uh, ready to go into your quilt or make it up into an individual wall hang. you could still do all the nine blocks and have them as individual Wall hanging. I think it'd be nice as three vertical. Oh, yes. Um, like a triptych. Exactly. Mm, gorgeous. Yeah. That would be lovely. Gorgeous. Right. Now, we've also got months one and two. Let's start with month one, where it all began. Now, in month one, I'm just going to show you, it, it has one slight difference, doesn't it, to the rest of them. In the, it's got a kind of... A legend. Well, I call it a blurb. Yes, that's a what blurb. it's saved as in my computer. <laughs> so it has the whole quilt on the front, so you can see where you're working towards, and it has some details about the quilt. Then you've got your three panels and your folded patchwork. So you have the geisha, you have the dragonflies, and you also have. So it's a whale. Wave. It's yes. a wave. A wave. A wave. Well, it could be a wheel, but I, I in my head, it's a, it's a wave with bubbles it. coming up. Yes. And a, a net behind it. Yes. The fisherman. Because in, in Japan, gold. Japan, of course, is a thousand islands. Is it? Mm. Wow. No. Well, maybe it's a thousand miles from the top to the bottom. Maybe that's... A thousand something. A, exa there's a yes. thousand in there somewhere. But yeah, it's uh, very nice. Fabulous. And of course, you get all your fabrics in there. You also get your background. Just add in a few threads for embellishments. If you want to put beads, then you supply your own for that. So that's month one. That's how it all began. We have literally got a handful of those. Yeah. 
Oh, seven. Just seven left. That's it. That's our second restock. And I think our last. I, I probably. think probably. Well, it's not going to be very many more. No. But it really would be a handful. A handful, yeah. if that. We've also got month two. That was Cranes, Blossom and Sashcomb. Now, this block you get, these are the stylized cranes. Then you get your cherry blossoms, your sakura. Yes. And then you get your, be I love sashko. It's so elegant, absolutely beautiful to do as well. So you get your sashko panel and then you have your folded patchwork. So all of this, it's sort of three dimensional, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it? yeah. Um, there is, oh, let me see, I can, I have just, tucked these down i've taken a little stitch on the end but mm -hmm. this is a th i can pop my fingernail behind mm -hmm. um i like to get the 3d element to it to create dimension on each of the panels and there is such a a diversity of what is represented on the panels that you want to separate it with something of interest to just give you the separation mm. um, in month two because you were doing that sashiko panel um, we supply you with a skein of thread to mm -hmm. do that with uh, you can also use that for the um, the airlines that are behind the crane mm -hmm. and you will also use it later in some of the um, uh, the later blocks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's uh, different techniques month one to month mm. two. So we're trying to introduce something a little bit different. Well, it's month. sort of often the point, isn't it, with block of the months that you, I always think you're trying to achieve something more than you thought you could, either in terms of the techniques that you're going to build up. You know, it would be daunting yes. to say right from the get go, I'm making all of that. You've broken it down into individual techniques, individual panels, individual months. It's manageable. It's achievable. And I think really most of us at the end of 10 months would look at that quilt and say, I can't believe I've made that. I yeah. can't believe I did all of that. It's incredible. Well, that's the, that's the idea that yeah. uh, we have done some of the hard work. We've put the colours together. Mm -hmm. We are giving you detailed instructions and we are providing that all in a manageable sized chunk. Um, this is where I always talk about slicing the elephant. Yes. No, um, no animals have no been harmed. No elephants were harmed, no. no. Uh, because it just allows you to progress uh, to achieve something each day. Yeah. Or each month you achieve something. That's I do think you should, if you're buying it, I think you should open it up and you should start to it. I know some people wait until they've all 10 months. Mm, mm. And I wouldn't if I were you. I would start. And otherwise, it, 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 you need a little breather in between. You need other projects mm. in between mm. because there's a reasonable amount of hand stitching and not everyone has time to sit and get all the hand stitching no. done. No, um, and I think also as well, if you have any sort of, you know, dexterity issues or you you know i mean i get you know sore joints sometimes uh, so i can do a bit yes it's lovely and i do but then it's nice to have a little break and like you say if you spread the work out over a month and then maybe have a few days rest and, and then your next and, month. and then you're waiting on the next one coming in now um, let me just show you how to shop if you go to our web shop so www.sewingstreet.com click on watch live and then you will see everything that's on the show. Um, now, let me show you where kit three is. So there it is. It's in stock. $34.99. Click on add to basket and then you can proceed to check out. 
There you go. Still available at the moment, but numbers are dwindling very, very quickly. Uh, but that's how to shop. If you prefer, you can call our call centre 0800 001 4433 and talk to our customer services. And you can do it that way too. If you have the app, Sewing Street app, you can tap the app and you can buy it through the app. So lots of different ways that you can shop. It's super, super easy. Right. Okay. Uh, what can you show us? Well, Please. I want to try and show you something different each month mm. that I uh, do the demo on here. But some points I think are worth just going over again. Uh, in our instructions, we give you three dimensions. We have the size that we want you to cut to start with. You will then trim back because of the amount of handwork that you are doing these backgrounds can distort so you want to be able to square it up and then you will have your finished size. It's so particularly important that you pay attention to these sizings for the sashiko block so that you are drawing the grid within the right size. Yeah. So let's, uh, in, let's start by having a look at the full sized uh, uh, colored diagram here. So this is the full size and it is the correct way round. Um, we will first look at the cranes in the grass, then we'll go to the trellis and then we're down to the, uh, to the flower. On the second A3 sheet we have reversed, though there's quite a lot of symmetry this month so there isn't too much that needs reversing but the uh, the grasses do need to be reversed so that they are turning in towards the block. Mm -hmm. So um, my preferred uh, fusible web is Bonda Web. I, the other products are available. I think this one's nice and soft and it's the one I tend to use. Yeah, we have the small packs of Bonda Web, two ninety nine. Details are on screen if you want to grab some. Well, One pack wasn't that a really... It was a beautiful segue. Wasn't it just? It really was. It you was think great. we'd practice that? <laughs> So um, what, the, what I want to point out to, well, two things. You simply can lay this below this if you have a light box. I love the fact that it's to scale. I love the fact Me that too. it's full colour. I love the fact that I've got an outline as well. You it do everything. It makes it easy, doesn't it? Yeah, it it's does it's, it's encouraging. It's um, taken some of the... Uh, the headache. Yeah, the, the boring the bits. Completely. The boring bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, um, so there, um, there is a large piece of batik that I would start with the middle section and then work to either side. But the, the fun bit here is that while there are only two fabrics, you get three effects mm -hmm. because we have used the wrong side of the fabric as the right side. Gotcha. So on this lovely, let me turn it. The, um, let me turn this one over. There's this lovely green with uh, gold etched uh, etching around the uh, the leaves. So on the right side, you have this uh, Can gold. Just move it forward slightly for me. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So this one is going to sit on there, but then I put the bond web on what is the right side of the fabric for this one and the, fa the side of the fabric that we'll be showing is actually the reverse. So we have the same green tones but this time the darks and the it's more darks and lights. Mm -hmm. So this one is going to sit in there yeah and you just keep building. I hope well I think I've cut all the pieces it was a little bit of a, I think I'm a piece short, but never mind. And that one's going there. So we have this mix of batik. I suppose the thing is, with, ah, there with natural elements, you can use a bit of artistic license, can't you? Well, I, th I think so. As long as you have, um, the ba it's balance. Yes. Um, so I have that long batik 
right up through the middle, yes. which then allows me to go to colours, on, well, to shading on either side. Yeah, I, get I think that. I think you can see that quite relatively clearly on there. Mm, that, that's you can. nice. Then um, there is the crane to pop in. Now um, there are two cranes, and he's just going to sit on top here. Now I'm not stitching any of this. I'm going to just allow you to see how you can do it because you don't have to put your cranes where I put mine. Right. Um, I think it does look, you need one at the top and one in mm. sort of mid area here. But you can basically pop them where you want. So do you fuse everything down in one go and then stitch everything? Um, I, In this instance, I would... I would probably fuse and stitch that central long green piece in place because that's my center line, basically. Mm. Then I would put the rest of the green in and then I'm ready to start playing with the, the gotcha. crayon because um, the crayon has four pieces to him mm -hmm. and it really is, um, you could... And here's where you play before you do anything too mm, definite. Mm. You could have him on on top of or behind. Yes, yeah, because if you want to tuck behind, that's where you need to decide first before so, you fuse. So I, so as I say, I would put that centre yeah, in, yeah, and I would have a pressing board or ironing board and some pins, and I'd have a bit of a play. Mm. So, you know, I can have him doing something like that, you know. Do we have the Millwood um, applique mat, Hannah? I'm a huge fan. Have you tried them? I have one, and I'm afraid I'm still an old-fashioned girl. Yeah? Because, well, I think it's a process. For me, it's a process, because I'm actually designing this as I go. Yeah. And it is more of stick a pin in there, see what it looks like, yeah. lift it out. If you have the design and you know where you're putting everything, then you can build up as the mat allows mm, you to do. Mm. Um, it doesn't doesn't allow my process to Got work. You. Yeah, because mm, mm. it is it is a different thing designing from scratch than following a pattern. Yeah, yeah, it's two different things, isn't it? It is, in, in my, my opinion. So we've gotten um, that crane in place. Um, the additional embellishment is embroidery to put some curly swirly bits in, to some fronds, I suppose, around the tops of the grasses. So if I now move on to the trellis, providing I can find my little bag with my important little bits in. Oh, yeah. yeah. So... Um, you know, um, anybody who follows me, that I love to put different textures and re sort of have backs and forwards. So the trellis here has been created as um, a strip that has been folded in three. It's like you would make a bias strip, but these being straight don't need to be biased. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting on the straight. Uh, it's a three quarter of an inch piece. And if you look, you will see that cunningly, I just pull that down a little bit, yeah. You will see that I have only gotten one, two, three, four, five exposed ends. Mm -hmm. The rest have been cunningly hidden behind a blossom. But um, this fabric is quite soft and it is simply a matter of turning a little end over and I just uh, finger press. And then I'm going to, I, I don't, yes, you could use a HERA marker mm -hmm. to score this. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of different tools. I find that my fingers do the job. Sure, yeah. So I've, I've finger pressed, I'm folding a third over. What does that fold down to? Is it a quarter inch? So I suppose if you had a quarter inch bias tape maker, you could use that too. Yeah. And then fold the ends in where you need to. Um, absolutely. I, I, 
I'm not a gadget girl. No, me neither. Me neither. There are some gadgets that I consider to be tools and I think they're wonderful. And others I just have never truly gotten on with. So um, you're going to tack this. So a knot at the end of your thread and you want your knot to be on what will be the right side of this strip. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stitch along this. Now this particular one is the top one. So I, um, this top, um, well, it's going to sit in here. And of course they do uh, weave in and out at the top here because it is a trellis. This, um, this tacking is about, I don't know, half inch uh, stitches and gaps along here. You need it enough to hold things in place. You could press it before you stitch it. I just find my, f my fingers do the job for mm -hmm. me. So I've only needed to tidy up one end of this. The other end will be under the blossom. I have used a matching um, beigey light brown thread to stitch these in place by hand. Again, you could you could blanket stitch them, I suppose, um, on the sewing machine, but that will flatten them, which kind of um, defeats the object. Anyway, we have we now have one of these, which is shorter mm -hmm. and I've stitched these down but I have left um, a little gap under my two verticals so that this one oh just watch your head Yvonne Ooh. <laughs> could you just move I can where move you're working forward. just a little bit further forward for me uh, if forward. I move that, I will automatically move forward. Oh, there we go. There, that's looking that's, so that's better, isn't it? So I'm now, this top one, I'm putting over the first vertical and I'm putting under the second vertical. Yeah. Aha, gotcha. Right. Um, we're going to just shimmy that up a little bit. And I do swear by applique pins. Mm-hmm because they are safer on the sides of your hands whenever you're working with little, little pieces. Sure, got you. Because I, um, I am going to... Because you're going to be hand-stitching this right. time, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see, that's that. A lot of your applique is blanket stitch. Do you do that by hand or machine? Um, I do it on my sewing machine, mm -hmm. but of course it allows people to do it either by hand or machine. Mm. I like the fact that it is not a heavy finish to the edge. You know, the satin stitch um, can be quite difficult to mm. keep even mm. as you're going round, um, you know, this blossom. Um, is really quite, um, would be difficult to do a satin stitch around. Yes, yes. Um, if your sewing machine will only do a running stitch, then that's, uh, you know, a straight stitch, straight stitch then that's that. fine. Yeah. Um, but for, for this, to keep this 3D effect on here, I like to just stitch this down by hand. Just going back to the applique pins, if anyone doesn't know, well, I mean, what is an applique pin? Is it special? What, what are they and why well, are they well, special? We do well, have them, actually. They're clover, aren't they? They are. Beautiful. Well, um, this is one of the little squares that we're going to be dealing with later. And that, these pieces are small. Mm -hmm. That is, I would say, a centimetre long. I just hold that like that, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and they just allow you to hold, put to put more pins in, not to overlap pins. Mm. Even if you use well, the the flower, the big long flower headed pins for quilting are just not of use in this instance. No. They're so they're nice and short. They're very short. They will allow you to press over them. They don't melt which uh, I found out, it, it, they don't say that on the packet, but... No, I like what it does say on the packet. Can we just show that, Charlie? 
It will not stick out since it, it is, is short. short. And it's what it says on the tin. I mean, it could be said about you and I. Could yeah, it could, but... They will not stick yeah. out as they are short. <laughs> but we can be dangerous. Oh, we can be We can get <laughs> ankles, can't we? We're still good for ankles. Um, so um, let's just do um, a couple of stitches here because you want to be doing like a slip hem, but perhaps I would call it a an applique stitch yes. because you are going to keep the area that your thread is visible on the right side of your work to a minimum. Yeah. So you go, you come up into, in this instance, this trellis, and you then go straight down from that point back into your background fabric. So, and if you're doing this correctly, it doesn't matter what colour thread you're using, um, so that I don't have to embarrass myself trying to thread a needle on air here, but it would, I could do. Um, I'm just using the gold thread that I was using a moment ago, so it's a bit brighter than I would normally use. But um, we're doing little baby stitches. It's a bit like a slip hemming stitch, but you are going down vertically from there you're not doing that at a slant so whenever you have stitched all of this trellis in place you are then going to pop the blossom in place um, some of which I have just and again I have put it in particular places that's what's shown on the uh, on the diagram but look you just put these where you fancy, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, or, wh or where you need them to be, yeah? There's um, a variety of sizes. I've just cut out a few of them. I like the, the bigger, just look at the, uh, the separation of the color through the block. That's the, the key to it. Now, to, I th thought that I needed to have a little bit of colour coming down through the um, through the trellis. So I have embroidered, and Stuart was able to tell me this morning that this this is a chain stitch because my <laughs> eyes were not were not, not working that well at half past seven. Were they? They, well, was it even half past no, seven? No. Um, so this is just providing like a vine going through the trellis, and I have used a chain stitch. But to give the chain stitch some dimension, I have then taken a little running stitch on the side of the chain stitch. Did you do that in the same colour, Yvonne? Yeah. yeah. It just thickens up, mm. but gives dimension because mm. it's sort of pushing it forward. Mm. The illusion is it's pushing it forward. I like as well, um, now I don't know, what you all know what the name is, where you do like... Um, is it a running stitch and then you weave through it? Oh, it's a whipped running a whipped stitch. Whipped running stitch. Whipped I like run. that too. Yes, and I've, I've done that in some places. Mm. And you can also do a whipped chain stitch. Mm. And I thought about doing the whipped chain mm. stitch here, but no. I, I, I tried it and thought, hmm, that's not I'm, not... I'm not gaining anything sure. from that. But experiment. Exactly. As you said right at the start, make the quilt your own. Be a little bit experimental. If you don't like yeah. it, you can always take it out. Or maybe what you want to do is whenever you come to quilt this, you quilt where, around oh, where yes. you have embroidered. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Which I think... Do you would... like hand quilting, Yvonne? Uh, uh, yes. Mm. Now, it, it, for, for a quilt like this, I have stabilised. So I've stitched... <clears throat> excuse me. I've stitched in the ditch around each of the three panels. On your sewing machine? On my sewing yeah. machine, mm -hmm. with a matching background colour yeah. thread. So that then allows me to work in these individual panels. Mm. And I can be, I can take as long as I want. I actually did this as quilt as you go. I was going to ask you, could you do it as quilt as you go? And you actually did. I, uh, well, I had to produce this. Yes, yes, I, it had to be finished. It had to be finished in mm. a slightly quicker time than um, so I had to be progressing everything. So many quilters love quilters you go, don't they? It's, it, you have more control. Yeah. But it does, it's no faster. I no, don't, no. I, no, 
but it allows you to gives you more options. It mm. does give you options. And of course, if you are working, well, everyone will be working on Impressions of Japan each month. You could, in theory, do all of your applique, your embroidery, your quilting and embellishing so that actually in month 10, it was sashing border and you are done, not sashing border and then you've got to quilt yep. the whole thing. Yeah. You could handle the quilting over you, the 10 months as you, well. You could. Mm. Um, we don't give you the sashing fabric until the last month. Sure. But you don't need, even but you don't need to, go, but you, you don't just need, need to make yet. sure you are leaving yourself wadding and backing. Yes. That's uh, yes. around each of the three combined pa mm -hmm. panels because you do complete that because your internal sashing is there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the bottom corner. So stylized flower. Um, the tricky thing with this is that this block is a quarter of an inch longer than it is wide. So hence, on this uh, piece here, I have marked top because the flower is symmetrical in the middle, but you just need to make sure that you have it the, you just have it the right way round so that it'll fit. Otherwise, you're a bit short and it, yeah. So um, this is marking out a half inch grid again. So again, I've used two different colored Frixian pens. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I've used a background in black and marking the design on in blue. So half inch, but this is where I'm telling you that you need to be thinking about your, what you're going to trim down to. Mm -hmm. So this is your excess. If I just mark, you will cut that away in due course. So mark your seam allowance when you're doing this so that you know that your sashko is perfectly placed. That you're not, it's not going to fall out under your seams. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why there are three measurements on the front page, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you're going to do your, mark up the excess, mark up the seam allowance, and then draw your grid within, the, within those parameters. Mm -hmm. Um, this uh, is a half inch grid on the back here and I would, I would have used a penny to draw this um, apple core design on here. But I didn't bring a penny with me today, ah, did I? So, well, I've just been paid. Oh, so in, in, pen, in penny. penny. Well, in a brown paper wallet. Oh no! Little envelope. Oop. Do you remember that? I do. Oh, every in Friday. A, in a place where I work, <laughs> men used to get paid on a Thursday, and the clerks had to go out from the main admin building mm. with with a minder and a a wooden box and brown envelopes. Yeah. And there was a roll call, and you handed them, yeah. handed them Everybody out. Yeah, line up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the days. So anyway, not having even a pence. Oh, I you've used... You've got a penny to your name. Not a penny to my name. We should do an appeal, a charity <laughs> appeal. Yes, please. On. Oh, bless you. <laughs> so anyway, well, the thing is, I, I emptied my purse out of all the, all the shrapnel, yes, all the coppers. Yes. Anyway. I used the end of a Guterman 100 meter thread. Oh, that works. And that works. Great. Yeah. So um, you have a design sheet. Part of your instructions, you've got a marked up design mm -hmm. here. There we go. Let me get my fingers. So you could trace it from the design you could. if you prefer. I, I think it's e you could, but I think it's easier to have something to, to mark around. Totally agree with you there, yeah. Um, so we, you know, you're making sure that your penny or your whatever item you are using fits into that square and you are creating. Just watch your head, Yvonne, sorry. Yeah. Um, the overhead camera is exactly where we all want to be. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway. And I asked if it can be moved back, Yvonne, and it can't. Oh, oh, right. 
So you are creating apple awesome. cores Thank you. or spools. So yeah. you so you place you you do your grid, you place your no, you place your applique, draw your grid, then I, draw your sash code. I um I centered yeah. my my applique, I did my applique, I stitched it in place. Got you. Then I drew the grid around it. Very good point because I do get asked which way round I do it. Mm. I do the applique first and then the hand stitching. Now, I'm being very bold and I'm just doing a little bit of hand, free hand styling? here. Just, just a smidgen. Are because you an improv quilter? No. no. <laughs> could, could you imagine it? Oh, I, I, can't do, I can't do random in any shape or form. So you continue drawing until you have your entire. Now, again, with this design, you don't you you don't stitch in rows you you stitch across verticals got you so this is where you could use two colors yeah yeah so you're going to come down from here start with a knot stitch and finish on the within the seam allowance on the other side yeah so from side to side and i would if you're not used to ha doing hand stitching, I would have a little practice. As always, it's about getting the stitch and the space even. That gives you a, a much pl more pleasing effect. Mm -hmm. So around that curve, you probably want to get four visible running stitches. Got you. You know, Got it's you. Uh, have a practice so that if you get five, you want to consistently get five stitches. If you get three, consistently get three stitches i like that more than this is the number of stitches just be consistent yes yeah you do you I oh i just need to mention folks month number one about to sell out and that's our secondary stock i know loads of you want to get involved with impressions of japan it's so lovely isn't it month number two half the remaining stock has gone so i've got six i think seven of month two left that's all Month number three, over three quarters of the stock, well over three quarters of the stock has gone. I'm down to my last sort of few chances there for month number three. So I suppose what I'm saying is, if you're thinking, oh, this is lovely, I really want to get involved. Now's your chance. Now's your chance. Okay. Sorry, Yvonne. No, no that's fine. Um, it must be lovely, though, when you've spent nine months working on a project to know that you're inspiring so many people to try some different techniques. And because you love your Japanese designs, your replica, yeah. your sashi, all of this. This, this is... This, this is, is my happy place. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be yours, too, at home. Every month, look forward. And it might be an hour a day. It might be your yeah. weekends. It might be your mornings. Yeah, um, I do do prep work, mm. and then what you have ready, you can sit down with in the evening, be sociable, watch the tally, yeah. hold a conversation. Or if you've got hospital appointments, do your yeah. prep, take them along. Oh, waiting time at ballet or there beavers or yeah, whatever you know. Yeah. Uh, while you're there, Yvonne, would you mind just turning around so we can see the back of your waistcoat? Because I keep getting a flash and it's gorgeous. And I, I don't even remember well. what's on the back. Just, <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. Look. Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. What? Sashko and butterflies and some oh. blossoms. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd forgotten. Did you get ready in the dark, Yvonne? <laughs> Look, you're l lucky I'm, I'm in one piece in here today. <laughs> Um, I know you've had a busy few. I've, I've, Congrats on the new shop opening, by thank the way. You. I saw the pics; it looked amazing. We had a wonderful day. The, we the weather was kind, Good. and uh, we had about a hundred people come along. Smashing! So that Absolutely was so wonderful. gratifying. Yeah, and the family were there too. Yes, uh, my, my sister, uh, son-in-law, his mum, great grandma. So uh, is your sister older, younger? Uh, older i'm the baby i'm the baby oh the family. you're the naughty baby oh i was the one that was allowed to get away with everything according to were. both my sisters so uh, yeah that surprises nobody, nobody. <laughs> and i i always reckon i'm uh, i am as i am because i had to fight to hold my own against my Did two you? big sisters <laughs> anyway I'm the, I'm the baby of the family yeah too. I, yeah you can tell and um <laughs> 
and my my sister who was there is my middle sister and she's your typical middle sister. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's move on because sure. this is the um, this is the fiddly bit, but I do want to just uh, show you. But we so, like a bit of fiddle, don't we? Well, absolutely. So you are cutting little background squares to create the internal sashing. The gold square you are going to fold Just across it. further forward, diagonal. sorry. Thank you. Yeah, if I move my, yeah, if I do that, right? So I'm just finger pressing. Now, I do generally do this with the iron. Let's, let's actually do that with the okay. iron. Okay. Because I just kicked. got into there, Yvonne. Well, I just kicked the bucket. Oh, and don't my you? My shins are really enjoying the experience. <laughs> There we go. That'll stop me falling off the end of the uh, step. Okay, so um, this gold fabric is beautiful. Mm. It's got um, quite a lot of body to it because it, so I think it is useful to actually press this. Yeah, I didn't even mention it, but there are lots of gold overprinted fabrics in the quilt and you get them all in your pack oh, yeah. so all those special fabric and I think that's where it comes you mentioned earlier on about you see different things whether you're at a distance halfway close yeah. up you will see all this beautiful gold metallic glint on your quilt Can won't I you? set that down like that or not not so much on the table no okay can you not leave it sitting up I can yeah is that right I can um, you then have a little baby square. It's a one inch square. Yeah. You're going to, of the batik that you've used in your green grasses. So what you have is the gold from the stylized flower and the green from the, uh, from the grasses and the cream background that you've used throughout. This little batik square, you fold in half and you fold in half again. So we are talking tiny. And this is where the applique pins are invaluable. Mm -hmm. And I would, again, just use the tip of the iron to get me a bit of a crease there. You're going to pop the gold folded triangle on top of the background square. You're going to tack it in place because you have too many pieces on the go to not tack this, especially whenever you come to join them together. So a little tacking around here. You then are going to insert this little tiny square. Now, if you're a bit um, OCD like I am, you want to make sure you're putting these squares in the same way each time. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you have a folded edge and you have a double folded edge. So make sure you're popping them in the same way each time. Um, if you kind of pop your, your square in that bottom corner, right, let me set it down and use a pin. So if you pop it there and then just pull it forward to there, you're going, you want to tuck it in. Oh, what a good tip. I love that. Yeah. To line it up with the corner. Line Brilliant. it up with the corner. Brilliant. And then, so that's what you're aiming for. Now, if you like that straight line, you just need to, and this would make this process faster, you could just machine across that and hold yeah. it. So, take two. <laughs> you're going to curve that seam back. Yes. Yeah. And you are then going to, this is where the applique pins are invaluable because you are looking at what, maybe two and a half inches mm. in uh, distance around that folded edge. A little bit of gold thread. I did thread a needle just now while no one was looking. And again, it's that um, slip hemming effect that you want. Now um, you catch, I, I go right the way through to the 
so you can see the stitches on the back. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I noticed as well, when you tucked the green square in, there was only the tip poking out. But of course, you see more when you fold the edge back. So you've got to allow for that, haven't you? Yes. Funny um, little message from Julie who says, what did Yvonne mean by typical middle child? <laughs> uh, she says, I'm a middle child and I was never old enough or I was old enough to know better. I mean, it both sounds like it's working against you, Julie. Um, when playing with my younger brother, loving the show today, Stuart, Julie and Shard Somerset. Oh, yeah. That's cute. I like it. Um, um, my, um, yeah. my deputy, Deputy Joan, yeah. always refers to me as her awkward middle child. Ooh. I'm not her child at all, you know, but, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> but she has... An older daughter, Alison, Ali, and then a younger son, who's younger than me, um, John. So I do sit squarely in the middle of I both see. of her children. So I'm her awkward middle child. Or difficult middle child. Ah. I, I'm neither. I'm neither, Yvonne. You, you're just, uh, you're just the, the baby of the, the family. The baby. Well, yes. And, and don't, you, don't you find that, I mean, I certainly did, my parents had worked through all of the issues all of the sort of, you know, they weren't strict, they weren't too lax, they were just found a lovely, even It was field. just right, that, that you were the just right one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why they stopped. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, this is it now. It can no, get we, no can't take any more of them. we can't take, we can't any, take any more. We can't take any more. <laughs> more likely. Okay. So, more likely. Um, I have just so you just tack along. through, or you do little invisible stitches. Little um, that slip hemming yeah. applique stitch again, right uh, going through. I have used a gold thread. Um, now. now month one completely sold out. Yep, month one restock completely sold out. I really don't think we can get more of those now. Month two. Cranes, Blossoms and Sashko, low single figures. If you want month two. Month three, launch today, grasses, trellis and flower. And of course, the stylized cranes as well. Um, figure wise, we've got. Oh, OK. So when you've checked your baskets out, 14 left. So last few chances on month three. Absolutely gorgeous. Remember, as Yvonne said, best, if you can, to work through as you go, rather than saving them up. And I know it is sometimes tempting, isn't it? I've done a few mystery quilts in the past, mm. Yvonne, yeah. where um, I know people who have got everything, all the fabric, but they won't start it until the mystery is revealed. Like a, yeah. They want to know what they, they meant. And I'm like, don't you trust me? Just get started. It's lovely. That's, that's outside my comfort zone. I, 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 I you, you get that, I you? guess. Um, <laughs> Yvonne, that's absolutely brilliant. I, we'll have one, to leave it there. Can oh. I add just one thing? Nope. Um, Go on, well, yeah. Because <laughs> whenever you are joining these squares together to create your sashing, uh, you can put them together in different ways. I have put them together in this way so that I am not putting the bulk of the folded triangle up against another seam bulk of another triangle so this this folded corner is going up against a blank yes piece. yes so it yeah. reduces the bulk just the reduces seam. the bulk now you don't have to do it like this you can have them all going the same way mm -hmm. can there are options as to how you can put them together love an but option i found this easier on the the bulk awesome. and you're going to press these seams open perfect thank you yvonne well, thank, thank you so you. much wonderful we do have a second hour with yvonne at 11 o'clock so stick around for that now before i go i just want to mention i've got a little bit of a deal i mentioned earlier on the millwood applique mat i'm a huge fan you've got your silicone sheet that goes down on the um, ironing board or the pressing mat this is non-stick you can build up appliques on this but even if you are um just doing regular fusing um you've got your yeah. goddess sheet on top it protects your iron it protects your mat it keeps everything in place too so little elements don't blow away now we've got a special deal you get your applique mat you also get a five meter roll of bonder web for 43.98 
Now you're saving five pounds, and if you take that five pounds off the price of the Millwood cutting, the Millwood fuser mat, that actually takes the fuser mat down to a manager's special price. Now we can't normally do that. We're not allowed to do that price normally. So this is a great deal. You get your five meter roll of bond web. That would be enough for the whole ten months. Oh, more. More, more than more. enough. Yeah. You get your fuser mat. You, absolutely brilliant. Can't live without mine. For forty three ninety eight, you're saving a fiver. Uh, but you know, it's win win. It's win win. They both work together so beautifully. Right, we are going to a break. When we come back, the effervescent, the effervescent, the sparkling Adam Brooks is here with me. Oh, he's already practicing his dance moves. That's oh, too yeah. much jazz hands, Adam. I'm just <laughs> going to say it. Uh, after the break, with Sussex seamstress, it's a quilted jacket. It's gorgeous. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky. I'm the soft craft expert for Crafters Companion. Um, I come from London and I've been sewing pretty much all my life. I particularly enjoy doing embroidery. I'm really keen on that, but I've, I've, my background is um, dressmaking and also sort of patchwork and quilting. Um, so I do an awful lot of sewing for all sorts of different things. I suppose once you start sewing, you start doing lots of other kinds of sewing. So I particularly like got into needlepoint um, during lockdown, but I suppose embroidery is probably my real passion. My mum was a costume designer, um, so we were always sort of surrounded by bits of fabric and material and ribbons and that kind of thing. And I was always making teddies um, and my doll's clothes as a small child. So it was just something that was quite natural. And in fact, I've got so used to being able to sew, um, it's just become a natural sort of part of what I do. Um, I'm always fiddling around with fabric, as my husband puts it, um, making something new, um, trying something out. Always measure twice, cut once. Um, I'm a great one for not doing that and I always regret it. And making sure that you've got an iron to hand is really important. I use a tiny little, um, sort of almost like a travel iron that I have right next to my desk when I'm working so it doesn't take up too much space. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we finish broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. 
You still pay only one P&P with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one p p throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Welcome back. It's good to have your company on Sewing Street. Right, we've got the first of two dressmaking hours with the inimitable Ooh. Adam Brooks. Hello. Morning. Morning, everyone. How Hello, are you? you. Oh, I'm really good. Are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah, he came dancing into the studio, doing his moves. It was all, look, it's all jazz hands. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Razamate! Well, you asked for it. I did, I did. I said, could you just sparkle, please, Adam? And he said, it's what I do. <laughs> uh, right, this hour, we have got a fabulous, fabulous pattern from the Sussex Seamstress. Jane, you've done it again. It's the, uh, it's the Selmstone jacket, and it is a quilted jacket. Check this out. Look at this picture. It's absolutely beautiful. Sort of bomber style, isn't it? And I'm yeah. going to add this one as well, because this is absolutely gorgeous. Just have a look at this. Now, this one is using a pre-quilted fabric, but we're quilters. We know how to quilt. We can line up our fabric. We can mark it up with a friction pen. We can quilt it. It's got these beautiful deep pockets. It has got a zip front. Uh, of course, because you're quilting your fabric, it's kind of self-lining. And then from the back, it's just got this lovely, smart, sort of boxy shape. Absolutely lovely. I want to pop it on because I put it on earlier on. And I just think it's gorgeous. I think it's unisex. It is. Yeah. It looks good I'll on you. i show you. I just think that is absolutely lovely. What do you think? I love it. <sighs> Look at you. Oh, I like the fact that it's a little bit longer at the back as well. Smashing. So, that's our quilted jacket. Jane, it's wonderful. I love it. Um, it's the Selmston. Now, we've got all sorts of different sizes included in the pattern. Everything from a 32-inch chest through to a 58-inch chest. So, really, really good range of sizes. Can you imagine? There it's done in camo. What about floral? What about floral? Hello. Hello, you. What about if you patched the fabric together first? 
and then layered it up and quilted it. You could use H640, H630, you could use quilt batting. I've got 8020 quilt batting on the show. That would be a very economical way of doing it. We don't have pre-quilted fabric today, but you could use pre-quilted fabric for this jacket too and jump straight to making the jacket up. Loads and loads of different options. Now I've got some solids, I've got some denim, I've got some ribbing for the neck, for the cuff. Um, I've also got some really gorgeous and very well priced cotton poplin. What about hand quilting? What about doing a bit of borrow or a bit of sashko? Yeah, you don't have to do loads of it. It could just be on the pockets. You could do just basic um, straight line quilting, cross hatching to quilt up your fabric first. Do it in panels, do it as a whole piece. You could even layer up your fabric um, for a long armour or get a long armour to do it for you. Long arm the fabric. Oh yeah, you could get some and really interesting stuff that way. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So many different options. I think this jacket would be amazing done in a lame. I know it, I know it's a little bit out there, but what about in a lame? Quilted lame. I could see somebody like Joe Lye sitting in that. Me too. Or Jenny Jackson. Jenny Jackson definitely was. She would rock it. With a leopard print lining. Leopard print or lining. Binding. You read my mind. You read my mind. But a good all round. Loads of you coming in. Also, I think this really covers the spectrum of ages and styles. Because it's a really great shape, isn't it? It's a really useful style. Um, comfortable, lovely fit. I mean, I don't know what size, I think that's the, the, well, it's not a large as such, but maybe a 44 inch chest, something yeah, like that. Yeah, probably one, one of the mid sizes. But it looked great on me, I think. It looks great on Hannah. Hannah tried it on too. Super, super all rounder. Hong Kong seams inside. You've got that lovely binding around the outside edge. Adam's going to give us a full tour and show us how to make it. But as always, Jane does an amazing job with her patterns. They're so well explained. Absolutely everything's covered. And of course, there are also videos to go with all of the Sussex seamstress patterns um, and blogs. We're going to look at key phases anyway today. So that's the pattern. Now, well over a quarter of the stock's already gone. We're only 14 minutes in. If you want to grab your Selmston jacket pattern, um, grab it now because it's not going to stick around for very, very long at all. One pattern covers all the sizes, everything from a 32-inch chest through to a 58-inch chest. Third of the stock now has gone. So check out your baskets. Make sure you get your copy of this pattern. We haven't had this on air before, right? I've never seen this before. This is brand new for us. Brand new. Awesome. Right. Let's have a little look at some fabrics that would be amazing. Now, um, let's start with denim because denim would look absolutely wonderful. And I have got a dark, a medium and a light. We'll start with the dark. Suits everybody. Now, this is layered and quilted, so really it's quite a good thing to start off with a fairly light outer fabric. This is the perfect weight of denim. This is a nice light, almost um, shirting sort of weight. Um, beautiful. This is enough for the largest size. It's 150 wide. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, deep indigo blue. I think this looks good on every skin tone. Um, I just love it. I just love it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, I'm thinking actually a bit of, if you're going to, if you want to go a little bolder on your quilting, why not use a rust or an orange or a gold coloured thread or a slightly heavier weight, maybe a 50 weight thread um, for your quilting or even heavier a 30 weight thread. You could use variegated. That would be yummy. You could use a white thread. Also, a lot of sewing machines have a hand quilt machine stitch on them. You could use that too. Experiment, practice and then go for it. So that's your $25.99. That is for... Uh, two and a half metres is extra wide. That's enough for your largest size. Now, the medium, medium in colour rather than the weight of the denim, of course. 
again, I think this is... Oh, sorry, that's the lightest, I beg your pardon. Here's the medium. I'm just going to put the dark up against it just to show you the difference by the way so this one here is the medium okay and this here is the dark next to okay what about mix and match is that too much is it too bold can oh. we do the back could we do the pockets in a contrast i like a bit of mix and match i, I think it adds interest me too love that but this is the medium anyway so two and a half metres, it's extra wide, 25 99 If you're making the jacket, if you're not making the jacket, great time to stash. Great time to stash. Beautiful. That's two and a half metres. That's the medium. And then the lightest colour. There's the lightest. Again, I think that's like summer, isn't it? It's a sort of bomber jacket style, perfect time of year where you just want that extra layer. Nothing too heavy, nothing too, you know, you don't want to feel like you're putting a coat on, but you need a little something extra. And just to compare, there's your medium and there is your, whoops, there is your dark, okay? And I'm just going to put the dark up against the light so you can see darkest and lightest all right but the same great price 25.99 now remember those bundles are enough for the largest size for your outer fabric okay now i've got a couple more options cord let's start off with the navy now this is that really really dark inky navy and it's a very, very fine micro cord. So it's almost has a kind of, um, it's almost velvety. It's almost velvety, but it's a micro cord. Two and a half meter bundle, enough for the largest size. That would be lovely. Now, I also have a sort of mulberry or a Malbec, and it is actually World Malbec Day as well. Oh, this is called wine. This is wine. <laughs> I love that colour, though. Gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. I love the sheen you get with microcord as well. It's got a real kind of gorgeous, you know, quilted. That's going to look amazing, isn't it? Great price, $28.99. Remember, this is all about the Selmston jacket from Sussex Seamstress. Brand new today. Absolutely gorgeous jacket pattern. Now, I've got baby cord in a gorgeous floral. This is kind of quirky and fun. I think this is really cute. A little sort of mid-scale floral. You've got soft green, gold, and an antique pink in there. I went to the Bieber exhibition at the Fashion and Textile Museum last week with Janet Clare. Um, and this has got that kind of Carnaby Street, swinging 60s kind of vibe, hasn't it? Really cute. Right. Now, um, you'll need some lining. If you're, if, well, we're not using a, a quilted fabric, so we're going to be layering and quilting. So a lining fabric. Now, we've got some cotton poplins here, which are super value, um, really cute as well. Now, they're available by the half metre. You, I'm just going to check the width. So, I rec, well, so you're going to need three metres. This is a standard width. So this ends eight, six. Yeah, you got that one. Yep. So this is a lovely, I think that's gorgeous. See, that would look so cool with, that would be smashing. Six units, so less than 24 pounds, but that would also look really cute, wouldn't it, with the denim? Gorgeous. Uh, you could equally put that in your stash. <laughs> I love cotton poplin, actually, to back quilts with. I back a lot of quilts with cotton poplin. It's ideal. 
It's absolutely ideal. It's lovely. 3 99 a half metre. I know it's a really economical way of doing it. And a really special lining for the jacket. Um, I think as well, actually, I'm going to say you could use this for the outer of your jacket because you're layering and quilting it. But because it's a standard width, you would need three metres of this for the largest size. Would you like to do something wild? I'd like to do something. Stop it. Stop it. Two ninety nine a half metre. Yes, please. Yes, please. So now your cost for your three metre bundle has gone from less than 25 to less than 18. Yes, please. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Two ninety nine and a half metre. If you've already checked out, you pay the lower price. Two ninety nine and a half metre. Hannah, does that mean I'm going to get a maybe? Maybe. Let's see. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Right. So this. Now this would be absolutely gorgeous with the denim. Wouldn't it? As your lining, beautiful. Yeah, should be three ninety nine a half meter today. You're going to get this for two ninety nine a half meter. It's a poly cotton mix. No, no, it's one hundred percent cotton. Sorry, one hundred percent cotton. So that, like I say, I use a lot of cotton poplins to back quilts with. It's a, it's it works really well. Works really well. So that's your floral, absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Such a great price. And we're saying use it for a lining, but of course you could be using this for a dress, a shirt, a blouse, children's wear, bag making. Lining a bag would be lovely. Right, next up I've got a teal floral, which I am in love with. Have a look at this. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is a bit special. This is 349 a half metre. This is your price. 349. But look, it is really special. And it, for me, that is that looks like if Emily Bell had a big sister, it would be this fabric. You know, Liberty, Emily Bell, it's a much smaller scale. This is like the big sister. I think that's absolutely stunning. I love the colour. What do you think of that, Adam? I love teal anyway. It is my favourite colour at the moment. And yeah. that is, you're right, it's gorgeous. Stunning, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Again, 100% cotton, 349, a half metre. You'll need for the largest size, three metres of this. So six units. It's not going to break the bank, is it? Right, next one, I've got a grey with gold. This is stunning. Ooh. This is stunning. You like that? You like yeah. that, Adam? Yeah, that's 349 again. It's a bit special, that isn't it? Lovely, really sort of rich and regal. That's why I like it. Yeah, of course it <laughs> is. Well, actually, it's very, it matches your shirt because that's grey and mustard. Yeah, mm. no? I like mustardy tones. Oh, yeah, me too. Beautiful, right? That's that one. One more, pretty. Lilac-y, soft. Yeah. Beautiful, that, isn't it? 349, a half metre. Really good price on these. Absolutely fab. Right, I'm going to grab, I've got tubular jersey. Ooh. I'm coming to join you, Adam. You're joining me? I am going to join you. Oh, I, I love this. I need to grab the pattern. Hang on. All right, you grab oh, the pattern. I like this. Um... Now, the tubular jersey, this is for the neckline, the sleeves, that kind of thing. That's the one. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Will you show me how to use it? Yeah, hopefully I will get into the, on the demo with a sleeve. Awesome. Now, this is a little bit different because this is... It's a tube... It's a tube. 
It always reminds me of a body stock in or something. Will it suck everything? In? Will it be a size zero when I've got it? Somewhere? Absolutely. <laughs> No, it throws people because it comes tubular, but it's just because it's it's a knitted fabric, so it's knitted in the round. Mm. Don't let that worry or phase you. You just cut it as you would any fabric. Yeah. As okay, if it's on the you. fold or whatever. I'm just going to grab the mannequin for a second, Adam, and I just want you to show me where yeah. you use this fabric. That's it. So you're going to have more than enough in this bundle, um, but it's handy for, you know, if you're making another one or yeah. other projects that use this. Um, so we've got it in the collar here. Yeah. So the collar is all of that um, knitted ribbing there and on the cuffs as well. On the cuffs. That's the only place that you're using it, but I love it. It gives that bomber jacket-esque type yeah, of yeah, feel. Yeah. And um, also such a professional finish as well. It is. It feels lovely um, and it's going to hug and give a nice fit as well. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, me too. It's a nice little move Olivia um, back a little. Finish. So let's start off with the blue. This is the pale blue. This would be really nice with the denims, wouldn't it? Yeah. I really wish nice. I'd have had this colour actually with that denim. Yeah, that would look stunning. Beautiful. So that's a metre for 849. And again, that's going to do a lot more than one jacket. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've got a length of that at home and I think I've made about three sweatshirts and I've still mm. got a bit left. Mm. And that's for the neckline and the cuffs. Fab. Next one, black. Can you dye this? I mean, I know you can't really dye that, but like the light blue. I don't know. I've never tried. I no. don't know how well it'd take. Mm. I mean, try a sample and see. Yep. There's your black. One metre for 8.49. Never seen this on air before. Have you not? No. I think I've nope. used it a couple of times. Oh, hang on there. That's the green forest. Yeah, this is run one forest. demo in <laughs> run forest run. I'll tell you where I used it. In my snuggle up pattern, I yeah. had it on then because I had the cuffs in um, a ribbon option. Yes, look at that. That's nice. Yeah. Is that the needle cord? Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. That's it the feels lovely. Cord. That's it's nice, isn't it? Wouldn't that be yes. a fun jacket? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's the green, and then we've got a dark grey marl. Yes. A marl. I like a marl. Love that. Again, that would be really nice with denim. Yes, it would be. It? Yeah. Mmm, yummy. Like it. That's dark grey. Again, 8.49 for a metre. Now, just to recap the pattern, it's from Sussex Seamstress. It's brand new today. It's the Selmerston, or Selmston, um, Beautiful, unisex, 32-inch chest up to a 58-inch chest. And it's a really nice shape, isn't it? It is. And like you say, it's a bit lower at the back than the front. So you've got, you know, a nice bit of shape in there. Yep. And yeah, it looked great on you. I'm not just saying that. You. I think it did look good. I felt really comfy in it. And that's what it's about, mm. making clothes that are comfy as well. Over half the stock of the pattern's gone. It's yeah, brand new. Surprised. Grab this while you can. Even if you're not going to make it right now, grab it. Because we don't see the range of patterns from Sussex Seamstreet. We see one or two at a time. Yeah. And it's easy in between times to forget what Jane's done. But there's so, yeah. so many amazing patterns. This is one of my favourites, actually. I think because I could wear this too. I love that about it. It's mm. unisex. I think it's ageless. Like yes, I agree. anybody could could wear it. I agree. And Jane's library now for Sussex Seamstress of patterns has been growing and growing, and it's a really hefty collection now of patterns. It is. And I always look forward genuinely to mm -hmm. sewing one of Jane's patterns because yeah. they're well written. They're on decent paper. They will last. You know, you can make again and again. Um, and the instructions are always really nice and clear. And you always get the support of videos and the blog as yes, well, of course. absolutely. So Jane, with all of our patterns, has a YouTube video to accompany it. I think there's usually now a QR code inside that will mm -hmm. get you to that. You know, isn't it amazing that you can just scan it on a phone and get Wonderful. a video? The day and age we live in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, my, my favourite use now, you know, when the sewing machine 
is flipped up like this is to rest my my phone there and I'm watching the video or Sewing Street. Or I do you, genuinely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See I what's do. going on in my absence. Now, if you have a UX8, you could do it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, not a UX8. Are you, have you watched it on the screen? No. You need to get with the times. You can't sew and watch at the same time, though, I don't think, for safety purposes. Ah, uh, I'm so yeah. behind the times, Adam. I need to show you how Thanks to do that. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> Right, grab your pattern while you can. Our stocks are dwindling. It's a great price too. Fifteen fifty. You'll make this again and again. And I dare to say, actually, that the grandies are going to ask you to make this for them. Yeah. Your daughter-in-law is going yeah. to ask you to make this. You're going to make... because you're going to do a borrow version, a patchwork version, a camo. One in, you know, there's so many different ways you could interpret this pattern. There's so much fun to be had with it because it allows you to be a designer almost. The pattern's there, yeah. so you've not got to really worry about the fit. As you said, the fit was nice on you with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, but you can have fun with the quilting, like you see in the mm. quilting lines, the sashko or whatever you choose mm. to do, your choice of fabrics. Mm. I'd love to see one in Alarmy. Oh. Yes, please. I'd like to experiment even with um, some wadding that's probably got a little bit more loft to really give it that puffer jacket. Yeah, there is actually, there's a, there's a fabric, it's almost like, a, almost like neck curtain type fabric. Mm. You bond it to fabric and then you iron it and it shrinks and oh. it crinkles the fabric. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I know the effect you it mean. It draws the fabric in and then you could cut the jacket out of that. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, loads of options. My goodness me. Wow. Okay. I want this Lame one. <laughs> Do it. Do it. You're the dressmaker. Make me a jacket, right. please. What colour? Like a gold Lame? Or... No, I just mean this one now. Oh, OK. Let's do that then. <laughs> Oh, crack on, just love. let me laugh. Crack on, crack <laughs> on. All right, so a little bit of a tip and advice. I'm just going to keep it very simple because we might be introducing dressmakers to quilting for the very first yeah. time. I've got some more techniques up my sleeve as well. Um, so I'm just going to straight line quilt this um, front piece. You could get really inventive and quilt it however you like. All I would say is the more quilting that you're going to do on the panels or on your fabric, the denser it could make your fabric, so bear that in mind. Oh, yeah, I've got a nice big uh, quilting ruler here, lovely. Um, and also, it might affect how you cut it out. Now, you can see I've got this cut out already, and then I'm going to quilt it. Because I'm only doing straight lines, there's not really going to be that much moving of it because I've got my 505 spray and whatnot. However, if you're going to be quilting it on the bias or in different directions or whatever, what I would advise is this to cut out probably an inch or, you know, a little bit bigger of a rectangle that will fit the pattern piece on, quilt your fabric and then cut the piece out. Yeah? Yeah. Fabulous. Agreed. But, of course, with that 505, nothing moves, nothing no. shifts. Brilliant stuff. If you've never used it before, you're going to lay it out on top. You're going to spray. I'm just giving it a bit of spritz. On the wadding. On the wadding and then smooth your fabric from the center out. That's it. Just smooth it, that's it. There we go. I'm doing half and half, you taught me this yeah. last time. Exactly the I same on the other half. You. you do listen, it's good to hear. I'm a good student as well as a all right teacher. <laughs> okay, make sure you've got a well ventilated space really yep. doing this. Health and safety first, shut up, yo. <laughs> 80-20 wadding is also on screen. How much wadding would we need? Because, I mean, our wadding's 90 inches wide. That's what I mean. It's really wide. And I think they sent me two and a half metres and I didn't need that much. Oh, no. That's no way near. Queen size queen. <laughs> well, what are we saying? It's, is it 2.3 metres? If it was 55. So I half you'd that. Need about a metre and a half top. Yes, yes. You don't need much. Because, of course, you can use it on any in any direction as well. Yeah. So. Wadding hasn't got a grain. That's it. Now, I find, because I'm only doing straight lines as well, that just the 505, it's magic, honestly. Yeah, you don't need to pin that. No. If you wanted to and you, you know, got a bigger piece or whatever, then you could, I suppose, put pins in, baste mm. it, whatever. But mm. the 505 to me is like magic. And the other thing, too, is that you don't have to spray it, fuse it, and then get straight on with the quilting. You could prepare your pieces. You could do the quilting a week, a month. 
a year later, you know, it holds it in place. This is it, exactly. Because mm. um, I'm just doing lines across for this one, um, I'm just going to mark my first line in the middle. Uh, and then I'm going to work my way outwards. It doesn't oh, okay. really matter. Use your seam guide on your machine. Yeah, that's Not, what I'm going to yeah. do. OK. Yeah. Cool. Um, I suppose there are other ways you could do it. You could mark all the lines on if you wanted to. or well, If you've you got thinking? a laser light on your machine, you can use a that. laser light, yeah. Laser light. Have you got a laser light on yours? See, we need to exchange, you know, tips on gadgets then. Mm. Right, OK. I've got a uh, heat erasable pen, but of course you could just use some chalk or something. And I'm just going to mark my first line there. Make sure I don't get mixed up with my Sharpies because I've got them in my case today for pattern <laughs> drafting so you can see later on. I know, I always think as I do that first slide, oh, it's not a biro, is it? <laughs> yeah. Right, so I'm lucky. I've got a um, built-in walking foot on my machine um, and that is engaged by a flick. I don't know if, oh, you can see it on the screen. No, I'll do it again for you. So um, let me do it with the other hand so you can see. There you go. So that's the walking foot done. But Amazing. if you've got a conventional walking foot, attach that. That's going to help. And I've got the seam guide on the machine as well. Um, and I've got that set at about one and a half inches. Yeah, and pretty much all, well, walking feet always come with a seam guide as well, or generally yeah. come with a seam guide. All right. So um, I'm going to sew this first line. Um, and I've got my stitch length at about, well, 3.8. A nice long stitch nice for long. quilting. Yeah. Um, and I've just got like a um, lock stitch at the beginning rather than back stitching. Don't need to back stitch. And I'm just going to put this line in first. OK, I'm doing it in a hot pink, I think, so you can see this. Oh, this is the thing, isn't it? With the quilted jacket, you can add personal style so easily. That's it. Exactly. So you can see that I've got my first line there. Nice. Um, so that's the first bit. And then all I'm going to do now is run that quilting guide down that line. OK. So now it's a bit foreign, but I'm not looking at my foot or my needle, really. I'm looking at this quilting guide. So I'm on the edge of my fabric there. Put my locking stitches in or you could just go straight off. So you're looking at the seam guide now? Yeah, looking at the seam guide, just following that first line that I'd done down there. Yeah. The other thing I'm doing as well, I'm not stretching it, but I'm supporting the fabric so it lies nice and flat. Yeah. And you'll notice I've got my table um, on the machine as well, and that's to support the fabric mm -hmm. we're quilting. It really does help. Coming to the edge here. Just don't let that eye wander. No. Have you got a wandering eye, Adam? Oh, it has been known. <laughs> <laughs> Have they been talking about me again? <laughs> no, you I've not. I that, tell Adam. you what. I I, you, seriously, I had an eye problem. I wear glasses and contact lenses. Uh -huh. um, and as a kid, I had the patches and everything with the ducks on. Oh, yeah. when you were in school. I had it operated on That's and everything, adorable. you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I've got astigmatism. But yeah, then, me too. Have you? Yeah. Um, it's like a superpower, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but even it's like your eyes are rugby ball shape instead of that's the, the one. That's the one. Um, so yeah, and the, it wasn't corrected even with glasses in my right eye, so I had it operated on. Oh. I remember waking up at about six years old. It's funny what you can remember, and uh, having a Mars bar. Of course, other chocolate bars are available, um, and Batman being on the telly, and I loved it. Oh, yeah, that's really brought the memories back for you, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it has. <laughs> I was really lucky because um, my dad had private health insurance, right. so I had it done at Nuffield Hospital. Oh, lovely. I got a Nuffield bear. Did you get a glass of wine when you were coming round? <laughs> six years old. <laughs> Shards of Thank you. <laughs> you can alternate the direction in which you're going as well. Obviously, that is dependent. You're a bit limited because obviously the guide is on one side, but... Sometimes that can just help with any drag that might happen. But, but I was just going to say, can you see at home, this isn't shifting. No. There's no wrinkling. This is because it's 505 spray holding it down, a walking foot as well, and also not pushing, not pulling from the back, just as you said, supporting the yeah. fabric and guiding it gently. That's it. It's easy. The 505 spray is the game changer for me, honestly. It just makes it so easy. Um, if I ever run out, Adam, there is well, wailing. Did. It's not good. I did run out, um, and I'd got, I hadn't got any. Uh, I'm, and I tell you what, I was really struggling. Um, ah, looks the business. There's no drag on mm. that at all. I've not pinned no. it. 
And the other thing I like to do, Adam, I don't know if you ever do this, yeah. is to install the twin needle. Oh, yeah. So it's a double row, that narrow, would be lovely. quarter inch yes. apart, and do double rows. You could always just go back in and stitch a second line. Yeah, but mm. a twin needle would be ideal, wouldn't it? Love it. Have Love it. it. Right. Doesn't the hot pink look good? Yeah, I think with a um, heavier weight thread like you were talking about, you'll really get that definition mm. then, won't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I've done a bit of a blue Peter, and here's one I've prepared earlier. Oh. <laughs> Living the dream, Adam. <laughs> OK, so you end up with, obviously, that quilted. Now, you'll see on the pocket piece, just to show some variation and give you some ideas, I've gone for some diamond quilting. I really there. like that. And the I'll contrast be... between the two is just awesome. Yeah, and, you know, you can contrast it. You can really mix it up. Do you know what I mean? This is going to be a really unique jacket for you. Um, OK, what we need to do is a little bit of binding. Now, I have made my own binding, actually. Oh, hello. Right. So this is, again, where you hello. can add a bit of a staple. This is from a fabric we've had on the show before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I think we did some pyjamas from it, me and we you. We did, we did. Um, Still wear them every Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what is amazing? Is all of this bias has been made from about a fat quarter of fabric. Wow, yeah. If we get time, I'll, I'll see if I can give you some tips on making your own. All right, so I've got some pins here um, on the pocket piece. Well, that is a Blue Peter moment. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it Flip free, it over and there it is. Pins and everything. Um, I've got pink on it. I'm just going to change my thread because it okay. will annoy me. Um, but what we're going to do is just um, between... the there's some it juts out your seam allowance you'll see it quite clearly on the pattern piece yeah so between there's a centimeter down there and a centimeter in there you're going to pray, place this bias binding lovely message from debbie in county antrim she says oh, morning guys morning. you two make me giggle oh. um, is this gorgeous jacket beginner friendly because i need this in my life well you've answered your own question you need it in your life get the pattern in your basket and check out it is i think a beginner could do it I don't think there's anything really difficult with the construction. No. And also, I think that the, the, the pathway from what you can do now to what you could do is your motivation. Yep. That Ooh, is, isn't it? What a lovely quote. But isn't it, though? Yeah. It, you know, what do you want to make? You will learn the skills to make what you want to make. If you don't know how to put in, if you haven't done quilting before, you'll watch Adam, you'll watch a video or two, you'll have a little practice, and then you're a quilter. You know, that's all. That's all. There's so many facets. But it is a beginner-friendly pattern. I think, yeah, I think that, you know, a competent beginner is, is, is how I would describe it. Yes, I went on the sewing bee, Adam. I'd made a pair of pyjama bottoms. That's it. That was all the dressmaking I'd done. Exactly. And, and you I was a semi-finalist. Come on. That's what I mean. <laughs> and he's still dining out on it. No, <laughs> no it's true, Adam. I'm I really doing the am. same. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what? It, it is. You, you've got to push yourself a little bit. But that's the glory of sewing is that there's always something else to learn. Yeah, there is. The, and there's always something to inspire you. Yeah. Just give it a go. What's the worst that's going to happen, honestly? True enough. Do you know? And, you know, if, if you struggle with the pockets on this one, leave the pockets out the first time, you know? Yeah. Um, just concentrate on the actual structure. All I say is practice the techniques individually of the project before you go straight onto it. So if you've never done bias binding before, bit of bias, bit of fabric, and practice what I'm doing now. Mm. That way it doesn't matter. Practice makes perfect, and that's the only way you get oh. better. I've yeah. got a friend, actually. I dance with her. Um, I'm doing a lot of dancing at the moment. You are. Um, and I'm loving it. Um, and she, the, the sleeves have gone on her um, coat. Okay. They were leverette, and you know when it peels? Oh, yes. So she's taken the sleeves out, mm. and she's asking me for advice on binding the armholes. I oh. said, I could do it for you if you want. And do you know what I love about it? She went, I've got a machine. I should be able to do it. I'm going to give it a go. Good for her. Good for her. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Do you know what? That's it. Right, OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold this bias um, back over on itself. So you see, I've sewn it on the wrong side, and I'm bringing it forward to the right side now. So I'm make sure I've got a nice, neat edge there. Now, this is different from if you were doing a quilt, because as a quilter, you'd be hand sewing this. And you can hand sew it if you want. There's nothing to stop you doing that. 
Um, I just know that a lot of dressmakers prefer to, because you've got the construction, which mm. can be quite a lot to worry about as well. You're sewing from the right side now. Yes. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've got more control on how it's going to look mm. and where the stitch is going to be. If I sew it from the right side, I've not got as much control over the stitch. And then it might, some might be on the binding and some might be on the fabric. So where are you sewing from the right side? Is it on the binding? On the binding, on the binding yes. Side. So it's now folded over to the right side. Do you know one of the things I think um, does, well, not just beginners, but also the, the, the biggest favour in my, my limited experience of dressmaking is tacking. Yeah. Because it's something that, that often we don't show on air because it's all about getting things done speedily. And also a lot of, lot of modern sewers now don't tack. They pin, they sew. Some don't even pin, Adam. They just pull it right. over and just go for it. Well, listen. But, <laughs> but old school, pin, tack, tack sew. sew. You're so much more in control. Yep. Try it. Honestly, it's like the mirror signal manoeuvre of sewing. Do you know what I mean? I when do. You, when I you like learn that. to drive, that's what you learn, and it's it's the same for this, really. Right. So the reason I'm not is because a I want to get through it and show you, exactly. And b I won't be able to tell you the amount of bias binding we use at work. Yeah. There's so much that we bind. Yeah. Um, with attractive bindings, sparkly bindings. Oh. Oh, we've got all Lame sorts of binding. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bound work in panto costume but even things like like when you're putting in a sleeve if you just pin it then when you're sewing you've got these rigid bits of metal straight as you're trying to sew whereas if you've tacked it and got rid of the pins that's it, it. Is, but it's an extra step and so a lot of us miss it out doesn't that look smart i mean i'd probably go with a color that blended in a little bit more but it's up to you but i've got I it like you know an, an equal distance from the edge and then actually on yeah, look at that, just look, that pop of colour. That is just fabulous. I know it's only very small in, in this project, but you could really go for it. Like well, you, you said, do the, pro do the pocket in a dip contrast fabric. And also, where you've done this one with the hot pink, yeah. if that was like a pink... Oh, you had to pick that up. Couldn't you, just to pick that little bit up? Yeah. Oh, so many options. Fabulous. Right, OK, let's carry on. So the pocket position is marked. Well, the bottom of it is. And I've just put some um, red tailors tacks. I think I you nearly pulled them out. I thought they were <laughs> not bits. I was there. I was like this. <laughs> I was like, should I just pull that out? And then I thought, oh, I think they might be tailors. <laughs> <laughs> I had to kill it. Do you know what? If that does happen, if you lose them, you can just put your pattern back on top and you could just put a pin through it and mark it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, what is going to happen here is this top bit is going to fold over by a centimetre. All right. And this bit is and the bottom bit is mm -hmm. the side that miss, meets up with the centre front isn't. Now, again, we're talking about tacking if we wanted to. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it, Adam. Because we're professionals here. Well, it was something I, I know that um, Esme Young on the sewing bee, I, I don't think it was shown on camera. I know she'd said about pins and tacking. Yeah. You know, yes, they're a bit old school, but they've been around for a very long time for very, very good reasons. Yes. Give it a go. Absolutely. I, I agree with her, to be honest, on that one. Because I think a lot of modern dressmakers now use like the quilters clips and everything's just sort of held together and you go for it. And there's a certain, I get that completely, but there is a lot of satisfaction to be had from just slow and steady, yeah. tacking, and then you can actually see, is that fitting? You've got so much control, haven't you, when you're hand sewing? Yeah, Absolutely. I love, I do love a bit of hand sewing, actually. Mm. It is therapeutic. It's very mindful and gentle. Yeah. So you could try and press this over, but my, my thing with pressing in this garment, usually I'd be saying press as you go, press as you go, mm. press as you go. You've got to really flatten all that lovely quilting that you've yeah, done. That's true. And we don't really want that. So, yeah, I'm tacking these bits down. There we go. I'm doing it with a contrast thread, so A, you can see it, and B, I can see it and know to pull it out at the end, because this will be coming out. There you go. Mm. So that's that bit done. Are we doing the whole shebang? Let's do the whole shebang. All right, then. Um, so this bit's going to fold in as well. 
I've not knotted the fabric at the end. I've just left a nice enough long tail. Single you... figures on the pattern. I, do you know, I love it because I think this is a really cool jacket. And it like you cool. said, I love the word you used to describe this, ageless. Yes. It's, it's ageless. It's timeless. It's, it's cool. It's, you know, it could look really trendy. It could also look really subtle, gentle, you know, classic. It just depends how you quilt it, the fabric you use, the um, jersey neckline you put, and how you wear it. I think what you wear it with, you could wear it with a t-shirt and jeans. You could wear it with, you know, a blouse and a skirt, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And you've got this fusion now, very trendy, maybe in the last decade. Like, and I know it's not for everybody, but you know, like really smart dresses and then like, you might put a pair of trainers or pumps with yeah, it. Yeah. Like to get, make it a little bit more casual. I could really see that kind of vibe, mm, you yeah. know, for the younger ones or, or, well, not just for the younger ones. Why, you know? The young and the young at heart. Yeah. I'm young at heart now, I think. Is that the bluebells? I, is it? Yeah. I, well, it is. I put it on a post yesterday mm. because we had the Bluebell range from Janet Clare launching. Oh, lovely. And I thought, what would be a good song? And, and yeah. Young at Heart from the Bluebells came up. So Fabulous. A message. A message. A message. Uh, morning, boys. I've been sewing for 30 plus years and I still tack and use yes. Taylor's tacks as it improves the finish, Tracy. You it say. does. Yeah. And it's like you said, Stuart, it's because you've got the control. Mm. Do you know with zips, especially if I'm doing an invisible mm, zip, mm. I mean, I have, I did put an invisible zip in on air once with Rebecca Reed. Did I tack then? I can't remember. But that was nerve wracking doing it on air. Yeah. But uh, do you know what? Zips have never phased me. I've never had zip fear. No. It's like overlockers. Overlockers, I've never had overlocker fear. But then I had one as a youngster. I think if you don't know that you're supposed to be scared of it, the first time I did free motion quilting, I was at my quilt class, I knew nothing, and the teacher said to me, you can either quilt it with a walking foot in straight lines or you can free motion. I said, what's free motion? Well, you kind of go like that all over it and the lines don't cross. I went, oh, okay. And I took the quilt home and I quilted it like that and took yeah. it back the following week. And everyone said, how have you just done that? It's really hard. And I was like, well, you didn't tell me it was hard. Yes, that, and, and that's, that's how I did secret. it because you didn't tell me it was hard. That's the secret because you can get inside your own head sometimes. Yeah, completely. But do you know what? That's a great way to quilt. That was deep. What? That was deep. Get inside, inside your, your head. head. No, but that's I true. overthink things. Do you yeah. know what? And I've learned that with doing something else, i.e., the dancing that I'm doing, like the ballroom dancing. So if I overthink a step, then I can't do it. No. And if it's broken down so much, I'm a bit like, but whilst if I don't think about it, yeah. I was learning Foxtrot, right, in uh, an advanced class, never done it before. And I'm just following the lady's steps and I've got the rhythm. I've, I'm all right with rhythm. You've got the rhythm. Got the rhythm. And she says, how can you just do that? I says, I'm following your feet. I'm not overthinking it. Because she didn't say it was hard. Yeah. You know, she'd have told me it was difficult. I'd yeah. be like, oh. Yes, yes. So this isn't difficult. The, follow the steps. Take, I always think if you've got a good pattern, you know, it's like with cooking, isn't it? When people say, can you cook? And I'm like, well, I can read. I can yeah. follow instructions. And I think if you do that and the recipe's good, you, you're on a winner, aren't you, really? Yeah. This is the same. It's a great pattern, well-written, well-explained. Adam's awesome. Uh. Jane's awesome and does videos for a pattern. So even if it's a technique that you've never done before, you are supported. That's it. Absolutely. That pocket looks gorgeous. I'm just a few pins in there. Now, because we've tacked it, I'm so glad we've done that because I never get a chance to do it on here. And it's, yeah. I think these are key skills. And, and often, you know, if you, you, you don't ever see anybody tack anything on the sewing bee. <laughs> and so many people are inspired to start dressmaking from the sewing bee. And I think a lot of those people think, you know, you have to make it in four hours or you've somehow failed. You have to, you know what I mean? Whereas uh, yeah. actually some people take four weeks to make a blouse or a jacket. Good. This it's, is it. It's a joy. 
Right, all I'm going to do now, I'm obviously going to leave the bound edge open because that's where your hand's going to go in. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds daft Now you're pointing it out. So you've got to. Yep. Um, just as a note as well, obviously I've tapped that back. If you don't want to leave those edges raw, which I wouldn't usually, you could overlock them. I mean, I suppose you could even bind them if you wanted to go to that much effort. But, you know, an overlock would be fine on that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make sure I've got some nice um, back stitches. Just Could you do a double this. line of stitching and sort of enclose the raw edge within your double line of stitching? Yeah. Yeah, you could do. Mm. That would be a lovely idea. And if you've got your twin needle on already because you've done your quilting, that, yeah, perfect. Um, right, OK. I am going to... I've got my stitch length. Um, that's about a three. I'm going to back stitch there and I'm just stitching on the very edge now of that top bit. And that cheeky UX8 does go through that like a hot knife through butter. It's easy. Yeah. It's so easy, you know. Still using that walking foot function or not this time? Um, I think I've still got it on. Oh, no, I've not. It's popped it's off. Popped but on. do you know what? Quite often, let's put it back on. But you could. Yeah. And because it's so subtle on this machine... You, it's doing the job, but you, you forget it's on in a so good way. You might use a walking foot at home for the construction as well. Yeah. And the thing is, if you've got your walking foot already set up, then, you know, you've got it on already, haven't you, if it's sure, if one yeah. of the bigger ones. Three minutes left, Adam. Is that it? Can oh, you gosh. get that jacket finished in three minutes? Oh, gosh, don't do a sewing bee on me now. I, would, I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> Right, and then I'm just going to come up there. I had plans. I've got loads planned to show you. I've got the cuffing and all sorts. Yeah, come on, crack on. But there are videos, aren't there, to support yeah, you from the seamstress? Absolutely. Can I show you something nifty with the cuffing? Of course you can. Just quickly. And then I'll go and get ready for the next one. That's if I can find it. Where did I put it? Put everything prepared. And... <coughs> So that's the sleeve pattern. So I started to quilt that. Um, right, so to do the cuff, it's a rectangle. You see how small these pieces are for the cuffs now? So, you know, you're going to have a nice bit left over. Want to fold that so it's got the wrong sides together, right, along the fold. There's a fold line on the pattern. It's along the longest way. And then we're going to fold that in half. Yeah. So you're with me so far? Yep. Right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one corner from that open edge, you see, and I'm going to just flip it over to the other side. This is a bit like witchcraft, this is. Right? So you see what I've done there? And then I'm just going to sew that at the centimetre seam allowance. Put a pin in it, but I'm just doing it quickly to show you. Right? Sew so down there. You want to make sure as well that you've cut the um, fabric... So the longest bit is where the greatest stretch is. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because we want it to be able to stretch around our wrist. It's quite obvious where the greatest stretch is as well. Mm -hmm. Right, and then that will turn round and that should cuff all integrated and sewn. There you go. That's really clever. That's a real nifty trick. Really Jane does nifty. a demo of that on her video as well. Yeah. That's the ace. We have actually, I, I've missed a few messages on Facebook which <gasps> I need to quickly catch up with because we were too busy having fun over there. Uh, Jane, Sussex Seamstress herself, has been in touch to say, Morning, guys. Feeling very lucky to have the dream team showing my pattern today. Bless you. So much fun to be had with this one. And so lovely to see you both excited about it. Oh, um, she it. also says you could pop some really fancy machine embroidery yeah. in the back. Oh, love that. Um, Karen's got in touch to say, All my two favourite B-boys on my screen. What a treat from my sick bed this morning. Oh, lots of kisses. Get well. The pattern's absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, absolutely gorgeous. Very tempted. Thank you, Sussex Seamstress. And um, sorry, <coughs> Teresa, I've got some more tears. Sorry. Teresa says, um, morning, you gorgeous boys. Bit late home from work today. Large coffee in hand and ready to watch the rest of the show. Yay. Mm. Wonderful. Right. Quick round up. Pattern on its own. Uh, oh, Adam, I think you've got the pattern. I've got the pattern. Thank Can you, you catch? darling. Yep. Woo. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. 
Uh, right, here it is. It is the Selmstern jacket, quilted jacket. You can either use pre-quilted fabric or quilt your own as Adam is today. Easy peasy. Um, definitely something to go for. So many different options. Embroidery, sashko, patchwork, you name it. Dress it up, dress it down. Pattern sizes from a 32 to a 58 inch chest. So such a broad range of pattern sizes there. Now, <clears throat> outer fabrics. Um, I'm going to grab the medium denim. Beautiful. This has been super popular. This is the medium blue. <clears throat> All of the denims actually that we've got are a nice lightweight, so ideal for layering and quilting. Absolutely gorgeous, that. And then my personal favorite from the corduroy, from the baby cord, needle cord, uh, the wine. Remember it is World Malbec Day. And I, it's my favorite red wine, Malbec. You too, you too. love Malbec. Uh, so there you go, absolutely beautiful. No, me and, me and Yvonne McAtamney both love Malbec the best. We do, we love it. Oh. Now, the tubular jersey, we've got four different colour options. We've got the grey marl, we've got the light blue, we've got the black, and we've got the forest green. Black sold out, useful to stash these. That mid-grey, that grey marl, that's about to sell out too. My favourite, I've got to say, is the forest. Love the forest. And that goes so well with the baby cord. I just think that is a match made in heaven. But also that would be gorgeous with a camo, wouldn't it? A camouflage. Be very nice with denim as well. Mix and match, make it your way. Wadding, 80-20 quilt wadding. That's what we've used. Here it is, such an economical way of doing this. You need about a metre, metre and a half. Depends on the size, but a metre and a half of our 90 wide would do the largest size, 6 99 Now, we've also got some brilliant deals on 100% cotton poplin, okay? Um, between three forty nine and two ninety nine. Remember, this one should have been three ninety nine. This one too, but two ninety nine today. Hundred percent cotton. These would be great for making the outer jacket too. Um, we've also got this was my favourite, like a big sister version of Emily Bell. This is a cotton poplin in teal. Isn't that beautiful? And then two more. We've got. The grey with the gold, very smart, this one. And then that lovely sort of lilac floral. Brilliant bargains, these. 349 and a half metre. Such an e economical way of getting a beautiful quality cotton poplin. Now, um, <clears throat> if you've never bought 505 before, well, you need some for your stash. You're a quilter, a bag maker, a dressmaker. It holds your layers together while you quilt them. 505, absolutely brilliant stuff. This is the 250 mil can. Use it in a well-ventilated room. If I can, I take it outside and use it outside rather than spraying it in the house. And protect your table so you don't get any spray on your table, but absolutely brilliant stuff. Right, thank you for all your messages. Sorry it took me so long to read them. Uh, I'm joined after the break by Yvonne McAtamney. We're gonna be doing marbled windows. <gasps> Very exciting new project. See you after this. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting, and of course applique, which is my favorite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. 
We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. We're proud to have some of the most skilled and experienced experts in the industry. They're brought to you here every day on Sewing Street. Oh, good to have your company. Uh, what is the weather doing out there, Yvonne? Oh, I haven't looked. Haven't looked. <laughs> right. Haven't looked. We're in our happy place. We're sewing. We don't care what it's doing outside. There was. A, I didn't hear any rain. Good. So, so that's a good real sign, hope. Yvonne. Yvonne McAtamney, everybody from Village Fabrics, back with yeah. me for another hour. Now, just before we uh, launch in, I want to mention now, now, slap wrist for me. Yesterday, I said we weren't doing it again, but Hannah said no, we are. So we've got a great deal. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. You can save. £500 today. We are matching the special price on this. You're saving £500. This is the Brother MV2700. This is an amazing sewing machine. Free arm, free motion quilting, loads and loads of decorative, utility stitches, alphabets, you name it. It's all on there. Great, fabulous. You're probably thinking, good machine for £1,999. Yeah, and I would agree with you. What if I was to tell you this is also an amazing embroidery machine? Yes, yes. This is a combined 
Now it's an embroidery machine. Look at the size of the hoops. Absolutely amazing. You've got two large hoops. You can, I mean, there's hundreds of designs already programmed in, but it's also Wi-Fi connected. So you can go straight from your smartphone, your tablet, your computer, put more designs on. You can use, there's a USB port. If you've got memory sticks, you can use those too. There are thousands of free or very low priced embroidery designs out there. All they've got to be is brother compatible. Yeah. Uh, you can even convert drawings, logos, sports team names, anything you like using the Artspira app. It's free, download it from your normal app store. Uh, and you can do those with your embroidery machine too. And then when you're ready to convert back, this just slides off. You've also got an extension table. Absolutely amazing. 500 pound saving, five split pays available too. Now the price where we started, 2,499 pound. That is the price you will pay if you go elsewhere. £500 saving here at Sewing Street. There you go. Quick search on Google. There they are. 2499, 2499, 2499. You get the picture. Everybody else is 2499. We're 2499 normally, but today's not a normal day. £500 saving for an amazing embroidery machine and an amazing... See, I, I've got a combi, brother combi, embroidery and sewing machine. I was prepared for an amazing embroidery machine. I thought, I'll never use the sewing machine function. I've got my other sewing machines. I'll use those. I don't use any other machine right now. I use my brother sewing machine all the time. And then when I want to do some embroidery, just pop the, pop the front off, pop the embroidery module on. The machine knows what you're doing. It's ready to embroider. Absolutely fab. And those two big hoops, think of all the possibilities. Now, if you go to more details on the website, you get a fantastic breakdown. Do some research, have a look around. Like I say, everywhere else, you're gonna pay 500 pounds more. You won't get split pays. You get five interest-free split pays with Sewing Street. No credit check, no interest to pay. It's just an option you pick. And one payment today, and you get the machine home. Absolutely brill. Absolutely brill. All right. Just wanted to share that with you. Now, Village Fabrics I'm are back with an amazing new project. Well, the yeah, marbled window. A marbled window. Um, I just fell in love with this uh, this wonderful fabric. It's like a, an inner inner book binding. Oh yes, like the end papers, papers and that's the words. Yeah, isn't it gorgeous? Yes, and it's lovely. With the, um, the background fabric, which ha is navy, with little tiny speckles of turquoise on it. Mm. And it really acts like little hints of light coming through. It does, doesn't it? Almost sparkle. Almost, but uh, there isn't any sparkle. No. Um, so this, I thought, was a, a lovely central panel. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do with that as a centerpiece? And then I thought, well, how about just putting some structure to it and like these sort of glass blocks at the mm. bottom here mm. or creating a, a very stylized shell. It's almost prismatic, isn't it, that fabric? I, it, the, there's uh, another fabric that I've, in and it's like squares but they're kind of like circular splodges that yeah. become squares you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I thought that worked very well across the bottom here um, and then taking the lighter color from the main fabric for the binding which is just a little bit different as uh, as well mm. So as always, we give you full-size templates, lots of instructions and diagrams. And I thought the thing to do would be to show you how I orientate myself to be able to put these pieces on here. Sure, okay. And then make one of the blocks. Mm. Yeah, lovely, fantastic. Yeah. So full-size templates. Um, the kits are absolutely gorgeous. I'll just show you all of the lovely fabric you get. 
everything is, you know, kind of, you've got just the right amounts of fabric. So here's that fabulous, like feathered, isn't that incredible? Wow, you do find some really good fabrics. I, I have the luxury of buying what I like. Well, there you go, you've got great taste. Yes, There's you. that beautiful, uh, now that's not a batik, is it? That's a digital no, print. It, I, it's I, got that batik look. I'm not sure that it's even digital. I think it comes from a good design house. Mm, it's it's good, really it? cool, I love it. Um, you've got that coordinate. This is your binding, isn't it? Yeah. And then that fabric that Yvonne talked about that has the sort of little speckle that's almost like little points of light on it yeah. in turquoise. I mean, just beautifully put together. And then you do, of course, get full instructions, including your full-size templates. And that's so important. I mean, I do think... Yvonne, that it's a bit of a a bit of an example for others, you know, where you've got that lovely layout so that you can get everything just precisely right where you want it without having to fuss and struggle. Yvonne's thought it through for you to make it easy. Um, this is absolutely stunning. So you need a bit of bond web. Yeah. So I think that deal we've got, you get your five metre roll of bond web and your mill would applique mm. pressing mat, you make a five pound saving. It's a really good day to buy, isn't it? Really good day to buy. Full instructions, everything nice and clear. Now, we've got a second project from uh, Yvonne, and this is a bit of me. This is super cute. Check this out. It's called Cats Out the Bag. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, sorry. It's Happy Cats. Happy Cats. Happy cat. <laughs> Hannah, the producer, just said in my ear, it's cats out the bag. And I said, it's cool cats out. And it's not. <laughs> Happy cat. I'm glad you don't say everything Hannah says. No, me too. <laughs> oh, I've learned not to, to repeat everything. Oh, yeah. No, isn't this cute? Isn't this cute? Now, you've got your base panel for this i'll show you what you get but yvonne's also added oh yeah it doesn't it doesn't look like this in there no no because oh. you've added some outline sewing you've added some flower centers oh, yeah. this uh this finished uh wall hanging has lots of pops of color that you don't get yeah. on the original panel because the I'll the, show you. The flowers, Stuart's getting that open there. You see all the flowers? You can barely see the flowers on there. It's true, actually. These kind of disappear a little they bit. They do. But you've picked these out with embroidery floss. You've added some applique yeah. circles as well. I also love how on this cat here, you've added a little name disc. Yeah. If you have a look at yeah. the finish sample now, do you see all the added elements? See, see there's a little name disc on here. Yeah. I've added some uh, additional leaves that um, you fussy cut oh, out. Yes. Yeah. There's, uh, these are like little yo-yos, but there's a double yo-yo on there. Nice. Um, double yo-yo over here on this big daisy. I haven't done all of the petals, but I've done some embroidery stitches on here. So that's just a running stitch interspersed with a French knot. Yep. Just, it's play time. Yes, yeah, super. Think of this as a blank canvas with outlines and have a bit of a play. Really cute. Um, now you also yeah. get, as well as that um, panel, well, it's actually like a border fabric, isn't it? Like a double border rather than a panel, I think. Yes, mm. but we have cut a particular yeah. section. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a really clever use of the fabric. You've also got some polka dots. You've got some solids. You've got look for doing your flower centres. Oh, yeah. You've got little orange accents. Here are those extra leaves that you can bond web, cut out and add some extra dimension. You've also, of course, got your... In a orange border, your little accent cornerstones and your outer border. We get the binding too. You just add your own wadding, your own backing fabric. And if you want to add some embroidery floss, you yeah. add that in. Yeah, because yeah. you, you don't need a big quantity. Don't dive into yourself, your stash. And of course, you don't have to do it in the colours I've done. 
Well, that would be the fun thing, wouldn't it? I I've think fewer so. Fewer than 20 kits left up for grabs. Please check out your basket if it's sitting there. There's so many of you come in for this. Now, danger zone, because this is really popular. If you want it, check out your basket now, please. Otherwise, you'll miss out. And I don't like that when that happens. I don't like it's anybody sad. missing out. It is sad. Yeah. To the window, please, Yvonne. Right, to the window. move on to the window. So I've just I'll yeah. set that over there. Show me how you make it, wow. please. Let's, <laughs> let's um, the piece of background fabric that we give you is slightly bigger than you need. Because it is a square, I think the best, the thing that you really have to do to start with is to cut the square as we tell you. What we've given you is a half a width of fabric. So it is 22 inches in one direction and it's about 21 in the other. Um, what you really need to do is make that a square so that your, your diagonal lines actually work across the square. Um, I have simply folded, let's see, I folded in two and pressed, folded in two, and pressed, and folded in two, and pressed. So we're now on the diagonal for that mm -hmm. last one. So I, I pressed, and then I used a good old-fashioned chalk pencil. Great. We're going a bit old school today, actually, in lots of ways. Oh, wow. Chalk pencils Those, are great. They, they are, and of course, on the darker fabric, they're ideal. Mm -hmm. And as you work with it, they will... Uh, it will work, uh, come off. You don't have to apply heat or damp it or with anything. So in your set of instructions, you then have a full-sized piece. And it's about getting spacing around. Because you have marked, creased, and then marked your lines with the um, chalk pencil, you're you're almost there yeah yeah because what you're wanting to do now and this is where um i love these uh these boards these uh oh yeah stitch the and cut, pr and press. cut and press that's the word i wanted to stitch and press but um and you just i just stick a couple of pins in yeah. just to get so that you can move things but I'm looking at a halfway across the base of this shape. I don't know what to call this shape other than, you know, stained glass window shape. Yeah, like a petal, maybe a petal. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't it know. It does have a flower I was, as well, doesn't it? It was really interesting that I was, as I was cutting these out the other evening, there was a program on about Notre Dame, which oh, they are looking to have restored mm -hmm. in time for the Olympics oh, this amazing. year. Wow. So five years on and some of the, uh, the skills mm -hmm. that are being employed mm -hmm. and the amount of, it was just jolly interesting mm -hmm. scaffolding. and Oh, it's fascinating stuff. The, if you come to York, which is near uh, where yeah, I live, yeah. Oh, it's you can wonderful. You go past and the stonemasons have like open yards so you oh. can watch them working around the Minster. And, you know, whatever time of the day or, or, you know, morning, afternoon you go, the stonemasons are out there working. And it's so cool to see how these things are done. OK. And this is what we're doing, right? We, we are taking... We have a circle, which, of course, I didn't bring with me go in the middle mm -hmm. and you are then looking to make sure you are keeping on the diagonals on the uh, on the halfway points yeah yeah so that is really take your time don't press anything down until you have made sure that your spacing is correct all the way round i'm just doing um like a half uh here uh, pop some pins in at the at both ends. I would suggest to hold on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. and I've, um, then 
everything once these are in place it becomes easy that's but your sort of bare bones isn't this it? is your it structure. Yeah, that's your structure in place um and it is just a matter of doing that big star shape mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. uh, on the background you have um uh, some measurements that you can take from the full-sized layout diagram for the positioning of the, the circles mm -hmm. and also from the end of the shape to the diamonds for the top corners. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I bring this back in, I think that might be the, the easiest thing to talk sure. about. I'm going to... I'm going to take these off, otherwise they're going to waft all over the place. And that's where you find yourself crawling under the sofa because, of course, it has wafted. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No, not not on air. For one thing, we haven't got a sofa, sofa. Well, for you to crawl and under. Why so not? I mean... And why not? <laughs> um, so the bare bones are getting the pieces in place. I then have gone round in a, in a navy. On a, with nice. a blanket stitch all the way around each of the shapes. Can I be bold? You could do it in gold. Silver metallic. Silver metallic. Yes, silver. What, to go with the white mm. in there. Absolutely. I love a bit of sparkle. You're a bit of a magpie, really, aren't you? <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what... I thought it looked flat. So <laughs> what I did was I took some turquoise embroidery thread and I have taken a running stitch oh, all lovely. the way around mm. each of the, uh, of the pieces. And if I'd had lots of time, I would have gone round each of the shapes. If I, uh, when quilting, all I've managed to do are the big shapes and the two corner diamonds and you but what it does illustrate is a bit it, of hand quilting can really elevate a project yeah and you have to do the it, whole thing back and then. it starts showing how they pop forward mm. so there's a row of hand stitching and then that can be your guideline mm -hmm. to machine quilt between the shape and that line of mm. stitching which then starts to pop that forward yes. and i mm. think well, it's 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 a good teaching tool, I suppose, in that these pop forward, these circles, which I haven't done, look a bit flat. I'm you're, I'm always my own worst critic, of course. It, it doesn't really show up on the tally, but I'm aware of it here. Then, looking to the the bottom, this is this is one of my favourite blocks, actually. This little um one across the bottom here they they're a, i suppose they're finished at f uh, four inches mm -hmm. we have a pieced block assembly here yep so this is the order in which you would stitch and this is the final layout so it's about i've made i've made Half, well, maybe three quarters of it, but I'd like to be able to. And it's it's a bit of a broken pinwheel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really quite interesting. And with um, all blocks, I always tell you, lay it out first. Now, just want to answer a quick question. Christine's messaged me on Facebook to say, gorgeous, it is gorgeous. Is it needle turn? No, no. That we're we're talking about this. Mm. Um, no, it's not needle turned. It is. It's really good quality fabric. Yep. That's not fraying mm. very much at all. Mm. And with the uh, the fusible web, the bonder web on behind it, I think this is in the beginning fabric. Nice. Yeah. So that's Jason Yenter. Yeah. And the quality of fabric there is above oh, we love some Jason of the Yenter. others that are available. Yeah, but it's true. He pays you money and he takes your choice. Yes. And yeah. But, it, yeah, it's fused and then either blanket stitched, you could zigzag, you could hand blanket stitch. Yes. 
I love what oh, you've you... done, though, with the hand running stitch around yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that makes I, it special. I'm always a little bit cautious to... S we supply enough fabric to be able to bond it on. There's usually enough to be able to needle turn, but I can never actually put my hand and heart and say that sure. that's the case. Yeah. Um, you can always add, if you didn't quite have enough and you wanted to needle turn it, I would put different color, I'd use a different colored fabric for the circles. Mm, yeah. Well, you could do that anyway. I'm a big fan of adding in a bit of fabric from my stash to a kit. You know. Yeah. It, it, people sometimes are very cautious. Yes, they are. And they want to do that. exactly what's there. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully, as their experience builds, mm. their confidence builds, mm. and they start thinking, well, I think that would look better with such and such. Yes, I like And they that. give it a try. Now, just to recap what comes in the kit, it is called Marbled Window, and it's brand new from Village Fabrics. You get your picture, you get your full pattern. So all your instructions on how to make the quilt, there's some fusible applique, there's some piecing as well, some patchwork. It's quilted, it's bound, so you get all of that, plus full-size templates yeah. and a layout. You also get, here's your background fabric, you get your binding fabric, you get your accent fabric for your pieced blocks, you also get the most incredible, it's like that sort of hand feathered, do you know where they use like, is it oil paints on yes. water or some and, kind of yeah. medium? Some mixture of the two, yeah. It. Oh, so yeah. So clever. I think it's gorgeous. You get the fabric it's too. Gorgeous. It's really exquisite. Yeah. The price is brill, isn't it? Twenty nine ninety nine. Add your own backing fabric and your own wadding. wadding. Bit of embroidery thread if you want to add some embellishments or maybe some hand quilting. But, uh, you know, basically you've everything there to make a bit of bonder web as well. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to complete one of the pieced blocks. Um, it, each quarter of the block is constructed of one, two, three, four pieces. You have one large triangle, two small triangles and a square. A um, little bit of best press, something like that, because you are attaching bias edges of the small triangles to the bias edge of the larger triangle. First thing you're going to do is stitch a triangle onto one side of the square. Um, you, I always start stitching from the, from the square end. It's the only place you can, really, to make sense out of the situation. A qu quarter inch seam, good pressing after each seam. And I am just going to get rid of that little ear at this point. Mm -hmm. So set it back down, figure out where you're stitching next. And where you're stitching next is to put that on to there. And we are again going to stitch from the, from the square end. Oh, now this is going to be interesting. Um, talk among yourselves a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <coughs> yes. Can I mention. Right. Oh, oh. Right, I'm back. Is it me? Oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. It's all right. It wasn't anything you said, honestly. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Just to let you know, the cat, the happy cats, they're out the bag. Um, over half the stock's gone. If you want the cat, this is super cute. Super cute. Really fun, isn't it? I mean, I I'm, think so. I'm a cat person, Yvonne, without a doubt. Mrs. Mills, Mrs. Mills. Uh, I'm a cat person. Um, and I just love this. It's so much fun. I love cat themed fabrics. This is really fun. You know, the cats are so, do you know, if you really wanted to be, you could add your own embellishments as Yvonne oh, has. Yeah. You could even add, Yvonne won't like this, googly eyes. Couldn't you? Oh. <laughs> Look at the face. Well, in a child's oh, nursery. Oh. Yes. It in would my house. <laughs> As I said, <laughs> in a child's nursery. <laughs> yep. Um, I think it has lots of it has a sense of humor. It does. It's, this, it's, it's and really you can fun. do whatever. You, 
And there I am trying to be serious with apart, my marbled apart window. Apart from that, apart it's from googly eyes, I, do whatever you like. But uh, you could, you know, little charms uh, yeah. for the little uh, bell. Little bells. Yeah, yeah. Cute. And anyway, anyway. Meanwhile, back at Notre Dame <laughs> over here, um, um, I have attached a second triangle onto an adjacent side of the square. I'm cutting off that little ear there, and I'm going to disappear again. Because I am, going, going, I'm, going. I'm going under the table again. You've got snacks under there. Well, I wish. There we go. Hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> and I, as I say, this is quite a small block with bias edges. I would recommend that you do take your time and press mm. each little bit as For you sure, go. For sure, yeah. Yeah, you know you can chain piece it, but. Then. Again, you said earlier on, good quality fabric, you know, good quality fabric is less likely to stretch anyway. The more finely woven, the higher the thread count. These yeah. things help, you it, know? Absolutely. Mm. It's just you have to try and get all this to meet in the middle in yes, a minute. Yes, absolutely. So if you just take your time and do balance on one foot. Do that as well. <laughs> you do a good job. Nobody would know at home, but Yvonne's actually standing on a box. Well, I've got to, haven't I? <laughs> I've got to. You've given all my secrets away. <laughs> well, it was whenever um, I, Sally Ann and I were yes. on last month together. And did you share a box? We, we did. I thought, I think that's a very good plan, I thought to myself. Because we, we are quite short, the two of us. But, you know, good things come in small packages. Totally agree. Christine says it reminds me of the rose window at Durham Cathedral. It, I mean, it's got that look, hasn't it? Beautiful. That um, is that. Yeah, it's the concept. Mm. Um, because as you were talking about York Minster, mm. I've actually been on a stained glass tour Ooh. of uh, the wonderful windows at York Minster. There. Oh, you have, yeah. Man, it's a few years ago. Of course, they've got. Um, glass going back to the 1400s Incredible, and it? more modern stuff and you know it was pointed out to us the differences and so i'm i'm no expert but i really appreciate the the processes mm. and the the magic actually that magical. goes into so we now have a little block Imagine, quarter. can't you, in medieval times or, or, well, even like 15th, 16th, 17th, you know, when life was pretty dull, you know, there weren't, a, there weren't chemical dyes in fabric. No. Oh. You know, so clothes were fairly dull and plain and, you know, ornamentation, sort of light through coloured glass must have been even more magical then. It's magical now, but, you know, if that was the colour, that was the brightness in your life. Mm. Okay. Quarters become halves, mm -hmm. so we're joining these together. Successful. Oh, hang on. Take your time and make sure you are square and level. Well, as I say, I couldn't believe that this program was on about Notre Dame as I was sitting, mm -hmm. uh, doing the prep for this the other evening it just seems so appropriate oh and fa fantastic coincidence yeah uh, now of course it does look wrong because this is our quarter of an inch seam alliance down here yeah this little bit has yep. given us our quarter here okay And then we're joining the other half. And we want to press these seams in opposition to each other. So that one I have pressed going to that side, this one I'm going to press going to the left hand side. Then those seams will nest together 
and we'll be dividing, well, separating the seam allowances so that will take some of the bulk out of the centre. Um, okay, so nesting seams with my fingers, then I'm going to pop a couple of pins holding the seam allowances down on either side of that central seam. And if your, if your pins aren't straight, then your seam's not straight, really. So it, you should have these <laughs> parallel, yeah. They don't look too bad, I think. I think I'm, it's not looking too bad, all things considered. I should be more confident saying that this will absolutely come together. Um, I think um, if you can sew all of a garment or a quilt on the one sewing machine, it makes a tremendous difference mm. than sewing it on two or three different machines in mm. different places. Mm. Well, even your quarter inch seam, it's different on different machines, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, it's different on a, a, a even if you put a slightly different foot on yes. or, Oh, I can't use quarter inch feet that have a guide on them. I can't either. Aren't you? No. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I never ever use a foot with a guide. I use the regular foot and the quarter inch stitch on the machine. Yeah, that's what I do. Or, but... like on my Benina, it has a quarter inch foot, but it doesn't have a guide. It doesn't have a seam guide. It's just the width of the foot. You can buy one with a seam guide on, but, but usually without, and I, I, it's just what you get used to, isn't it? Well, I, I always say it's about my eyesight and how the fa it's the fact that the fabric can curl up that guide. Yes. And yes. where do you actually want your eye to be looking? Yeah. Um, anyway, all has turned out reasonably well. Good, glad to hear it. But you do need to... Be, it's practice and it's becoming familiar with your machine. Yes. Is uh, what makes it all so much easier. Okay, I now have one of these. So Lovely. You have your pinwheel and you have your squares going round. And that is one of those. Mm, lovely. Now... I'm going to spot the obvious mistake. You know, it's something. <laughs> I, I was making a pinwheel quilt, quilt once, Yvonne, and I got halfway through and I suddenly thought, pinwheels can spin to the left or to the right. right. And have I done them all the same way? No, of course I haven't. This is why you lay them out each <laughs> time, yeah? You lay it out and you check. As long as I make another three like this. Yes. You haven't gone wrong. I haven't gone wrong. It's not a problem. In fact, this is the way the diagram is in the instruction. So I've obviously done four wrong. <laughs> so, oh, OK. So that's fine. <laughs> um, so there are some small uh, strips joining these squares together. I, can't, I like to think it's the, the, uh, the stonework on the, on the window mm. to give it support. Uh, a border across the bottom and then this lovely marble turquoise fabric around the outside. Yeah, that is lovely. Gorgeous from start to finish. That's the marbled windows. Now, uh, details are on screen for the kit. You get all your fabric, including your binding. You just need to add your own wadding and backing fabric. Bit of thread. Um, $29.99. Now, we've also got a second project, which is called Happy Cats. It's or, so much fun. It's or, so much fun. Massively oversubscribed in baskets. Please check out or you're going to look at your basket and find that it's empty because we'll have sold out and th all of the available uh, kits will have dropped out of baskets. So grab this now, $27.99. You get your feature panel with those playful cats. You get that lovely orange border, inner border and cornerstones, you get the blue polka dots, you get your binding as well. Again, add your own embroidery thread if you want to add embellishments, add your own backing fabric and wadding, 
Um, if you bought our early bird yesterday and you got the seam joining tape, uh, sorry, for wadding, the wadding joining tape. Oh, right. You know, projects like this are ideal. Yep. Look in your scraps of wadding, yep. seam them together. You don't need to, it doesn't need to be one big piece of wadding. Um, what can you show us, please, Yvonne? Well, I thought I would show you how I, well, you don't have to do it the way I've done it in, okay. in the picture. So I have taken another chunk of fabric and started doing it with different things in different places and different colours. Yep. Um, but all of the flowers are really uh, like an outline. So they provide little, little canvases for you to play with. Uh, again, I like putting the little 3D elements in. So this little guy down here, I'll just move him forward a little bit. This little guy down here now has an orange little tag around his neck. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, just done a, an orange chain stitch uh, uh, around his collar to hold his little tag in place. Up here, um, there is a uh, a daisy and I've used some turquoise thread on here and a double like a double yo-yo is what I call would call these these are circles now if I here we go so you have uh, templates inside oh let me show you the instructions okay so, because what we've done is you have as usual big full-size diagrams that show you what has been done in the sample that you have in uh, that I have in front of me but you don't have to do it like this but it's lots of ideas that show you where the yo-yos uh, have been put on and the green leaves have been added in so that's everything that you need to achieve what is in front of me. We've also given you some circle templates because this is where you start with making <coughs> these little yo-yos. Now, some of these yo-yos are tiny, hence in the bag, and I'm hoping not to lose them. Are they hard to do, Yvonne? No. no. I'm just about to. I chose to do a slightly bigger one, oh, right, here we go, we're threading a needle. Now, if, fortunately for everyone, my eyes are working better now than oh, they were Oh, good, then it's seven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> it was a it, bit touch and go it, earlier it, it on, really, wasn't it? It really was. <laughs> um, so let's just thread the needle, there we go. And all I want to do with this is to put a running stitch around it. Now, I... I have never been able to do this on a sewing machine. Um, I can't get the stitch loose enough or to actually draw in the way I would like it to. So, a little running stitch just within the circle, within the edge of the circle. You have sufficient fabric to really choose which colored fabric you want to use for which of the circles. There are three sizes of circles and there's three fabrics to choose from. On the panel, there are the, if I just move that, you can see that there are quite a few little black dots in the centers of the flowers. Yeah, so you know, here you have some little gray dots. You've got little gray dots here and I, I think that that is really quite, uh, it doesn't do anything for the panel in my opinion. So I have tried to cover each of those little groups of gray or black dots up with a little bit of embroidery or one of these uh, turned circles. So continuing on round here, there are lots of opportunities throughout the panel to be able to add colors to the cats and kittens, 
different stitches to be used for going round the outlines of the flowers. Um, on the sample that I have here, I have started, I have used chain stitch quite a lot because it gives you a nice reused effect. But I started on this one to be a little bit different and I've just done a back stitch mm -hmm. around the edge right. and then put a little chain stitch as little sort of uh, veins in the petal. You know, you can use such simple embroidery stitches, can't you, and just make such they, a difference. It doesn't have to be difficult to be yeah. effective. Um, so I'm just about round this circle. There we go. And we, there we, right. Um, and Christine sent a nice message. She says, you are so, she's an SEW, you are so inspirational. Oh, that's... Uh, you are, you are. Yeah, I love, actually, the way you kind of bring together loads of different, often simple skills to create something really magical. Oh, thank you. You do. You very do. kind of It's you. that combo, though, isn't it? That sort of it all adds up. And just, and I love the way you sometimes take, you know, it might be a really beautiful piece of fabric, like the marbled window, or a really fun fabric, like the happy cats. And you just, you know, they're so varied, uh, what you do, yeah, but it's I, lovely. I, I get bored very easily. <laughs> I love that. So I'm not good at repetition of the same thing. Um, the technique yeah. No problem, but don't ask me to make 120 log cabin oh, blocks. Oh, well, you know. for me, the most boring quilt to make would be the same block, the same fabrics, 49 times. It, I, I don't think I could do it nothing, now. There's nothing inspirational about <laughs> that. That's just a production line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So all I've done is I've drawn that uh, thread that has been that I've stitched around the outside of that circle I have drawn it up and hopefully I have created a ba a basic well something that looks like a circle mm -hmm. it's been a little bit uh, troublesome in that corner just at the minute and now you've gotten this where are you going to put it where do you fancy putting it yeah quite you know shall I pop it there Definitely. I think that's quite nice yeah because that it's great a bit of blue over there mm -hmm. and that I'm just going to put a pin in and I will simply scatter a couple of these around to show you what you can do with minimal effort, or you can spend lots of time embroidering. No, no, you had me at minimal effort. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Are they paw prints in the background? Yeah. Isn't that cute? I didn't notice that straight away. It's really cute. See, I'm just pu putting some little circles in yeah. place. Um, there's a little tiny job here that could possibly be his little tag. Yes. And so it goes on. And you, you play. Yeah. Um, there are directions and measurements to trim this panel down and to then cut the borders, putting the cornerstones in. You could definitely add some texture to the fur as well, couldn't you, with some embroidery or quilting? Y yes, some free motion yeah. embroidery over yeah. that would be really, be really nice. And also as well, if you're not that confident with free motion quilting, I think a printed panel with actually something to quilt around or in is, is such a boon. And I think the other thing is, if you just take a Frixian pen, yes. because it's going to disappear, and try drawing a few things Yeah, on why it. not? Um, you know, um, because I, I was going to write some words on here, mm -hmm. or some musical notes. Oh, that's a nice idea. I like that. You know, that. it's a cat's chorus. Yeah, oh, very good. But very good. It, it didn't do it for me. Fair enough. Give it a try. Yeah. You know, uh, Tried it, didn't like it, it said no. But I'm doing it. Yep, moving on. Yeah, moving, moving on. on. Well, you know what? This was hanging behind me earlier on. And we've had loads of questions or loads of comments. Super cool. Now, we've only got the pattern on its own, but do you remember earlier on we had that wonderful chalky sort of wobbly stripe from Macau? Oh, yeah. I yes. suspect this is Macau, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. They, they um, like that stripe. They, they do, do a it. lovely chalky it's stripe. It's a really nice. Um, this is the sailboat quilt pattern. Um, here's the pattern. 
This is a fab baby quilt, toddler quilt, children's quilt. Um, but also, just really fun if you've, maybe you've got a like coastal cottage, something like that. Maybe you want to go completely different, not nautical at all. Or, uh, or big boys like boats as well. They do. So and big girls. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I get seasick, so let's not go. <laughs> but you can do something like this yeah. in a, uh, this is um, almost like a flannel. Cute. And, yeah. you know, as a, a lap rug, uh, mm. uh, that's, uh, uh, oh, this was me starting to play with sort of the, um, oh, steampunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, bit like that. Bit of steampunk. Actually, great uh, scrap quilt. Yeah. This. Bait scrap quilt because you don't need much fabric for each sailboat but if you needed to mix your fabrics up a little bit as long as they were the same sort of tone or mm. color you could oh. even mix and match what about using this as a base for a memory quilt yeah and this was me you can use different fabrics for the the hull of the boat each yes. time with different things for the seals very nice um you know you you can really make this this is another make it your own quilt yeah, definitely. and uh, as you say i like the idea of it being a memory quilt i want you to have a look as well while we're here at the fabulous quilting because again this is a bit of fun this is it fits so beautifully you've got the waves and you've got the clouds just what a lovely way to quilt it. But straightforward again. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely we, achievable. Waves are not, that's the word, very achievable. Yeah, really like that. And easy to make larger or smaller, just add or take away the mm. blocks. Imagine four of those just for a cushion. Ahoy there, sailor. Absolutely. <laughs> that's your pattern. Lots and lots of you c coming in for that. Brilliant stash buster, brilliant to use what you have. Now, I've also got the rail fence cushion kit. Now, um, this is a great beginner project. I'm gonna leave it there so you can have a look at the fabrics for a second. Uh, rail fence is a very, very good, achievable beginner yeah. quilt block. Very much um, so. Nice and easy to, to sew. This is the actual finished cushion. I love that little bit of black in the border. Love this as well, this little... Now, I'm going to show you. It's rather special yes. fabric. It's, so the, it's another Jen bit of King, fun. Kingswell. Yeah. Did it. Can you look at the price as well? Twelve seventy nine. Do you get enough for the backing, Yvonne? Yes. Oh, amazing. For £12. Well, I, I had to ask because for £12.79, I wouldn't have expected well, it. It's um, great. I, I can, so We can always this, increase the price if it makes you happy. <laughs> no, no, no. You leave it as it is. Okay. Look, these are, these are called lollipops. Yeah. And Moda do these sometimes with Jen Kinwell. And um, so they're different fabrics and... I mean, technically speaking, this line in between them was meant to just be a sort of a cut line, a bleed line for you yeah. to use different fabrics so that you could get loads of different yes, fabrics okay. off one strip. But as Yvonne has done, yeah. so many quilters looked at this and said, I'm not cutting that out. That's gorgeous. I'm going to use that in my design. And so it has been integrated yeah. into the design. Um, uh, Look. This is, Isn't that fab? this is the part made sample. It's here. lovely. And you can, as long as you distribute that darker blackish one right. through the cushion. That's the key fabric. It is. You've really got to do corners mm. or you know, middle sides, bottom, so mm -hmm. that it is balanced. And the uh, with the black on the front. I've also p put a piece of it in the the back of the the cushion to just sort of unify front and back. Yeah, and it's it lovely. extends so that you have that uh, envelope back. <coughs> yeah, all of that is uh, in your kit. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you've made a cushion before but never done patchwork. Great intro. Yeah. Maybe you've done a bit of patchwork, never made a cushion. Great intro. Maybe you've done loads and you just think it's really cute. I do. 
Yeah, perfect. Or you, what you, a price. You want a, Twelve seventy nine. You want now, a quick, quick project. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Now, Sandra's. This is. It's not mine. It's Sandra's. This is Sandra's yeah, bag. Does she know? Cute. Little gathered, very pretty little bag here. Right. Lots of space inside. Twenty five ninety nine. Today you're getting a special price. Under twenty pounds, nineteen ninety nine. That's amazing. In here, you're getting all of your fabrics. This floral on the outside is rather special. It's a sort of um, almost like a linen effect. It's French linen. Is it French linen? How be oh la la. Exactly. Notre Dame. I, exactly. There's definitely a oh, French theme to my is. to my week. Isn't there it? is. You've got that beautiful pink polka dot. That is cute. And then you've got your lining fabric too, plus your pattern. I could make this bag so many times. What a beautiful shape. What a beautiful style. And it does have a, almost a vintage look to it. This little bow. It's got a bit of a 50s feel, hasn't yeah, it? I, well, I like it. Lovely. And I like the, the fact that it's got a, a big bottom, but it comes in towards the top. Yes. And allows you to... You know, put a big popper on the top mm -hmm. for security. Yes. Or um, I actually made one of these for my daughter's knitting Absolutely. because there's a big ball of wool in the bottom, needles still supported and still in the bag. It's a very good idea. Yeah, it's really cute. And can I ask, who's Sandra? Um, a lady who used to work for me. Ah, fantastic. We always have, all of our bags have girls' names yep. and they're somebody's daughter or... Ah. Lovely. You know, so that's how it, uh, really how nice. it goes. Under £20 for the kit. Inside? Full. Nothing Fully inside. No. Yeah, just lined. Just but we don't lined. need wadding. We don't need interfacing. Super. No, no because you, you have the, the strength of the linen and a cotton lining yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, and it is something, I think, that would attract... It's more dressmaking, perhaps, than... Uh, than quilting yes but uh, yeah love that love it's... that really cute thank you so much Yvonne what a lovely morning well it has been hasn't it now that I've now that I'm awake no, I know bless you well we'll send you send you back to the shop now yes sure well we've got plenty to keep you busy this afternoon oh I'm actually having the afternoon off I am oh. going to do my grocery shopping that I haven't done in three weeks well so treat yourself I treat yourself um, something lovely I will. I a have bottle a bottle of Malbec. Wow, I've got a nice Italian open at the minute. <laughs> don't, just don't, you've got a, don't. You've got a nice Italian <laughs> waiting at home. <laughs> Say no more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no more. I'm out the door. <laughs> <laughs> what happens at Sewing Street stays Is it so? Oh, thank Street, goodness for Yvonne. that. But well, no. Yeah. Enjoy your afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone who supported us so far in our move. And we look forward to catching up with people at the shows we're doing. Because yep. Malvern's Wonderful. not far away. No, and Festival of Quilts? I won't be there, won't I be don't there. think, because uh, we'll be getting ready for Quilt Fair in Belfast at the third of week of August. Wonderful. So Oh, busy times. Busy but, times. Uh, Wonderful times, too. Thank you, everyone. All right. We're going to take a little break now. When we come back, Adam Brooks is here with his second hour. Uh, we have got an amazing dressmaking book to share with you. Uh, previously sold out. It is on pre-order. Grab it while you can. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jane Greenoff and I'm stood in the barn here at Pink's Barn in Gloucestershire, England, which is where I live with my husband, and I stitch. I, st I think I stitch in my sleep. Um, I've certainly been stitching for over 30 years now, and by stitching I'm talking about counted cross stitch, or counted embroidery in general terms. I also collect old samplers, and I've got one to show you here. Now, if this smashing, it was actually stitched in 1796 by a little girl of eight or nine. And it's absolutely charming. So I collect antiques. I love to draw and create antiques for the future and look forward to seeing you all on Sewing Street sometime in the future. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. 
head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm, and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm, and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Hi everybody, now I should be joined by Adam Brooks, but we can't actually find him at the moment. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be around fairly soon. <laughs> Olivia's back. Oh, there you are! <laughs> I've just adjusted that for you. <laughs> we were literally about to come to air, and Olivia just went, <laughs> and I said, Adam, what can we... <laughs> oh <laughs> my word. You were here. That's um, not Adam Brooks <laughs> is back. Adam Brooks is Hello. back with the essential guide 
to pattern making. Now, this was a previous sellout. Yeah. Hundreds of you got this book. <coughs> Hundreds of you missed this book, more importantly, and that always makes us sad. We're going to take 30% off the hour. Wow, $15.99 was a brilliant price for this. This should be £25. £11.19, that's amazing. This is the essential guide to pattern making, isn't it? It is, and do you know what? It is brilliant. It is fabulous. Tell me more. What do I get into? What am I going to get out of this? I'm a beginner oh. dressmaker. I can barely thread a needle. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make me laugh. Um, so basically, long story short, traditional pattern making will involve a lot of mathematics. Yeah. Don't like mathematics. No, and a lot of us don't. I didn't at school. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What this is doing is giving you the blocks and the tools to make your own patterns. Without the maths. Minus the maths. I love that. I, I want it now. It, Take my money. Yeah, it's basically giving you the blocks. It's telling you how you can manipulate. And I'm going to show you a little bit as well. How you can manipulate those patterns and blocks mm. and then how to fit it onto you. Because actually that's the bottom line, isn't it? Let's be honest. If you... I I said earlier on, if you can, I wasn't being trite, you no. know, if you can read, you can cook, you know, if you can follow the instructions of recipe, but some people's cooking tastes better than others because they've learned how to tweak mm -hmm. and dressmaking, you can, this is what I did in the sewing bee. I followed the pattern. If it said size 16, I made a 16. If it didn't fit, oh well, I didn't yeah. know how, but this is going to show everyone how to make clothes fit them that's it that's exactly that and for that price it's a bargain because i'm telling you now for, for pattern drafting books yeah you're paying more like the 20 would you say it was 20, 25 quid. i think it should be 25 pounds yeah books books are really really cheap especially when you think about what you get yeah especially with this amount of knowledge in because yeah. this um john i think launched this book and he was saying it's everything that he would have done at college at yes. Wimbledon, condensed um into an easy to understand book well i, I was thinking it's not a book it's a course it is it is exactly that it's a course so where does the course let's call it a course mm. where does the course start what are our stages that we're going to go through right so it's split into four sections that we can see in the um contents the basics that's going to be a little bit similar to books you may have before to be honest it'll go through tools and stuff but it explains why they're useful it goes through different seams so even if you're buying the book just for that alone it's got a breakdown for of 11 pounds 19 yeah. amazing all your french seams your flat fell seams and all of that it's going through that initially and i think as well Adam, everyone, even if it's the same information, everybody explains it in yeah. a different way. It might just click for you. And yeah. then section two? Section two goes onto the drafting technique starting from scratch. So you take the block that's given to you in the And that's book. this one here, isn't that's it? That's this one. Now I've drawn it up and just to be absolutely clear, yeah. Yeah. So I've got it on some dot and cross paper here. Yeah. I think it's on page 50. Now, it gives you a scaled version. So to be clear, you're not getting pattern pieces to size. There's no pattern pack or anything. No. But you're getting a scaled drawing. And all of these squares equate to an inch, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, if you have got dot and cross paper, great. You don't have to use that. Well, we sell one inch gridded dressmaker's paper as well Perfect. at Stone Street on the that, roll. That's great. Mm. Use that because mm. then you can just plot your points from this. OK, I'm concentrating on the bodice blocks. I don't want to overwhelm. There is a heap of information in here. Um, but, you know, it's going to be really important to mm. kind of, you know, grasp it. And you can see there you've got, sorry, you've got your sleeve blocks. Just to give you yeah. a quick overview. Definitely. So you've got your sleeve, your front and back bodice. It's actually a dress block. Um, but then you can use just the bodice part. You've got your skirt blocks. Mm hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. If you can do this, you can really tailor and fit your own clothes and make your own patterns. Skirt, Amazing. block. Adam, um, this book is already flying out. I'm not surprised. Um, this, <laughs> when this book launched, it absolutely flew out. We know hundreds of you missed out. You are coming back in droves to get your book now. We've managed to get it back. And we've also repeated the uh, original price. Now, the RRP on the back is 15 99 I think...
that books should be like this should be about twenty-five pounds. If we were actually paying, I write books. I know how much work goes into. Them. Yeah, you do. And I know how big a team is. What it takes to create a book. When you compare that with what you pay for an individual pattern, price yeah. comparison. Waterstones, fifteen ninety-nine. Sewing Street, eleven pounds nineteen. I still think fifteen ninety nine is an incredibly good price, yeah. but eleven pound nineteen. Not so I mean, it was already good. It's even better at that yeah. now. I just, you know, I don't say it as a point of pain at all I, about the price of books. I just no. think we get an incredibly good deal in, in books because there's a lot in them, and this there one is. we're getting a saving. There is a heap of knowledge, and I'm well read on pattern making books, and I've looked at a lot of them, the traditional ones, because there's different methods and whatnot. And this is great because you've got that pattern block there. You just scale it up. Yeah, there is some work to draw it up. You know, you're yeah. not getting everything delivered to you for you know for free. But isn't that part of understanding? In. Yes, it is. It, you know, yes, Jack is great in touch. I'm sorry to say, I've wanted to draft my own patterns for years, but never understood it. This book sounds great. It is, Jackie, and go for it. It's one of those things. There's a bit of a mystique around dressmaking that comes from old and a long time ago. It's a bit like. Pattern drafting, yes, it is a specialised skill, but it's almost like it's too hard for anybody. It'll be too hard for you, you know. No, I want to kind of take that away today mm. and show you some techniques. Can't show you everything, but to kind of show you, you know, if things are doable. Yeah. You've got to put the work in. I'm not going to lie. You've got to read it. You've got to go through it and um, actually do well, it. Treat this book like a course. Yes. And enjoy it. You know, I mean, I love learning new things. Yeah. And actually, the way this is sort of, you can work through it sequentially or you can dip in and out. Exactly. Exactly that. Um, just, I think, once you, even if at the end of the day, you don't end up creating your own patterns from scratch, I think you probably will, but even yeah. if you decide, no, I'm not going to do that, you will have such a better understanding of how patterns are drawn, yeah. that when you open that Sussex Seamstress pattern, or that Sew Me Something pattern, you'll think, oh, I understand what I need to do yes. here. This is it. And it's not just for making your own patterns. A lot of it is that, but it's got all the alterations, adjustments that you can make to existing patterns. Well, like this here, look, fitting the shoulders, yeah. sloping, square, yeah. narrow, broad. broad. I mean, I've got all of those in one body. <laughs> no, you've not. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got like one shoulder lower than the other. Most people have. And that's have. normal. Yeah. Yeah. But this shows We're you so how to make those adjustments. And also as well, do you see on here as well, it actually shows you what the fault will look like. So if yes. your shoulders are sloping, you're going to get these gathers across your up. If it's if you've got square shoulders, you'll get pulling across the middle and then it shows you how to correct it. This is genius. It is. It's a great this reference book need. as well. It's what we need. You can tell a bad fit because of drag lines and yes. the drag lines are shown on here. Is that what they're called? Drag yeah. lines? Yeah. I used to have a cookery book that, that had loads of sections in that used to say what went wrong and why. And it showed you like a cake that had too much sugar and what it would look like. Now I yeah. can recognise what's wrong. When I it. And this is the same. Exactly. But you know what? You need to go wrong to go right. Nobody does anything perfectly first time. That's deep. Not even you or I. Whoa, you're not <laughs> kidding. Or you, Not do. kidding. You're, you. I said, no. Do you know, I make some absolute clangers still. But you're right. I learn more from making the mistake than doing it right. Because if I do it right, I learn nothing from no. the experience. No, this is it. Exactly. Exactly Another that. message, this book, this looks rather like a brilliant addition to yeah. my sewing books. Great for my daughter too, who loves a less conventional style. I love that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Honestly, it's fantastic. Now, I am going to say it's not, it's, it's condensed everything down. There's other pattern books out there mm. that will give you all the maths and you'll, it'll say, right, to plot this one, it's one half of, or it'll be one quarter of the chest measurement plus X amount. Oh, it's already making my eye yeah. twitch, Adam. And, and that's how you'd plot these points, but they've plotted these points and there's a measurement table in there and it explains, choose the block that best matches your bust measurement. Um, and that's what we that's do the with the dressmaking part. pattern anyway, yes, isn't it? Yes, exactly that, exactly that. Um, 
I can get on to showing us some if we yes, want. Yes, please. It's you fascinating, let me know. isn't it? Right, so I've drawn this up from the bottom. I've added a few of my own details to make things clear. OK, um, so this is a dress block or the top of a dress block. We call it a block pattern because it's there's nothing been done with it yet. And you wouldn't see a pattern, a commercial pattern ready to sew like this. It needs some work doing to it. But this gives us the draft of the body as close as we can get it. You'll still have to do a fitting, make a toile, make mm -hmm, the adjustments mm -hmm. in the book. So we've got the centre front down here. Um, I've marked on the bust line. This is all in the book. The waist line mm -hmm. as well. I've got the hip line further down as well, because we can use that bit. Well, snake hips, Adam Brooks. Oh, snake hips. Yeah, we were moving our hips last night doing cha-cha. Anyway, <laughs> different story. Um, I've written on bodies block front. This is a size small from the book. Of course it is. Definitely ain't mine. <laughs> I did that because I, my thinking was <laughs> that it might be a bit smaller to show on screen. Anyway, um, I've got my notch here. We used to see in notches. There's a front notch there. Take into account, though, there's no seam allowance. That's what I've put, no SA, no seam allowance. Mm -hmm. um, because we draft them net and then we add the seam allowance after. Well, I thought that was a special dressmaking term. Yeah. Noza. 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 <laughs> thinking, OK, is this something I should know? <laughs> well, if you, <laughs> no, <Osa. laughs> if you like Noza, you'll like Apex. You've heard of Apex. Oh, I've heard of Apex. Yes. Yeah. So um, that is basically the fullest part of the bust. And it's usually, yeah, well, let's just say it. it's an anatomical part. It's what usually is? the nipple. Well, do you not like that word? Press the dump button. <laughs> Have I got to get in trouble for saying no, that? No, I'm joking. That's what it's called. No, absolutely. The apex of your butt. Yes, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. That is different for everybody. All right. Sorry. So when it comes to fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. And it might be, you know, and... Again, that's where some adjustments need to be made. What you won't be used to seeing is this weird dart here in the shoulder. Now, it's drafted like that, right? But we need to manipulate that draft, OK? Um, we're going to work on just the um, top part, yeah. all right? So I'm going to show us how... That would be if you were doing a blouse. Yeah, or <coughs> it, the bodice, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. Might be a bit too cropped at the moment for a okay, blouse. OK, fair enough. fitted, but we could add ease and whatnot. Um, all right, I'm going to cut this. You want to really draw this up and then keep that and trace off. Mm -hmm. All right, you can so trace you off with like a ruler. A master master yeah, copy. make a master copy. Mm -hmm. This is going to change because mm -hmm. this won't be perfect when you fit it onto because no one's will be. I'm going to a wedding at the weekend, Adam. It'd be different on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I make it elasticated waist? <laughs> <laughs> Would you? <laughs> All right, so trace this off. I'm going to cut into this block now. You can trace it off using one of these rulers. I think you've got... Yeah, we do, well. actually. We do. Um, and we've also put the gridded pattern paper on screen as well. Two rolls, for I think, 23 99 But, yeah, this, um, this ruler, you've got your curves, you've got your slots for things yeah. like um, buttonholes as well. Really useful, this. Yeah. And the packaging as well, I haven't got it, but it has loads of tips on the back. Yes, it does. It gives you some. And you've got it in the book as well. The, if you, I was going to say my top two things from this are pattern drafting. You need some kind of ruler and you, then the book, definitely, yeah. to get you started. Magic little combo. Yeah. I don't know if you can see on the overhead, but that curve look is what will help you draw that armhole. You see? Then that's what I've used. Mm. All right. The curve along here will also allow you to do that hip curve because we want a bit of shape in there. Oh, you yeah. have to move the ruler, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's also great for putting seam allowance on. When we come to do it, I'll just show you quickly on here, um, it's got some grooves. It, you can do one and a half centimetres or I think it's two centimetres. Let's go with one and a half because that's kind of a, you know, one centimetre, one and a half standard mm -hmm. dressmaking mm -hmm. seam allowance. I've just lined my existing line up with the... Um, grooves in the ruler and if I just draw my line there there you go there's your one and a half centimeter Perfect. seam allowance in there SA is an abbreviation for seam allowance when you come to doing it on the curves you might just have to go into the grooves a bit so I'd probably take a pencil at this point yep. to put your seam allowance on it we, we won't do this to a later stage I'm just showing it you now because we've got the ruler out and just put in there look and in in the grooves and then I could join that up, and that's going to be my uh, seam allowance. You have to make... It's so clever, that, isn't Oh, it? it's so handy. Like, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little bit similar to a pattern master. I have a, what's called a pattern master at home, and it's a similar 
at all. Mm -hmm. But a very good price as well, yeah. 9 99 Great. And that's, you know, nice and solid and it's mm. got, comes in handy for all sorts. Even if you're not using it for sewing, you just need a normal ruler straight line. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that'd be useful for bag makers, actually. The yeah. curved ruler is essential when drafting patterns, says yes, the net in the side. I bought this from Sewing Street a while ago, and it's just so useful. Loving the Banter Boys. The Banter Boys, is that our new duo name? Yes. <laughs> Pop band, we could be the Banter Boys. <laughs> the Banter Boys. Banter Boys are back in town. Can I do that? No, oh, he's off. Shouldn't. He's off. Right, okay. I'm cutting now. I'm mm -hmm. cutting. I'm cutting. I'm cutting. Right, OK, so I'm just going to cut across here. Right, so you've, ju you've, you've copied your block off. The reason and this is NOSA, am I right? NOSA, yes. NOSA. <laughs> no seam allowance for those just tuning in. <laughs> 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 All right, so this is how you cut out a pattern. I've just not got the seam allowance on at the moment, and that's because I'm going to adjust things and move things, and the seam allowance is what I want to put on at the last, when I'm happy with the pattern. Mm. Or when I'm ready to make the toile up, I need some seam allowance for that. I know sometimes you do a different seam allowance depending on where on the body yeah. the seam is. But yeah. do you also do it depending on the type of fabric that you're using? Uh, it can be, yes. Yeah. So, you know, less seam allowance means less bulk. In industry, they'll probably use half a centimetre because they haven't got time to sit and trim it and grade it down. Right. You know, mass production of but stuff. But more skillful machinists perhaps can handle that. Yes, exactly. Exactly, because it's a smaller seam allowance. Whilst if you're unsure of the fit, well, it's good to have a decent amount of seam allowance. So if you need to let it out at the side seams or maybe the centre back. In costume, we always have at least an inch of seam allowance. Uh, just of the work seams because of the workout. Well, it needs to fit a number of people over a number ah. of years. So it might be one year we bring it in and next year we bring it out. Now, okay. I'd never do it on a curved seam. So I keep the curved seams usually, you know, a centimetre, a centimetre and a half. But mm. on the side seams and back seam, I'd add an inch or even an inch and a half in there mm. so that we've got more to expand it if we need to. Gotcha. Right, this is where the magic comes in, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that is it's basically called slash and spread. I need my ruler for this. I'm going to pick a point. We're going to do a... Um, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that for slash and spread? <laughs> Um, we're going to do like a French dart. You know what we used to see? Yes. In? Just the one yes. dart here. OK, mm -hmm. I've got two darts at the moment. I'm going to draw where I want that dart. And it doesn't matter. This is where you can. It's up to the designer. Right. OK, I could do it all the way down at that corner if I wanted to. But say let's do it. I don't know, roughly 10 centimetres down from the arm side. I'm just going to draw that line in there. OK. And you think, Adam, what are you doing? Um, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, Adam. this is going to be magic for us. Listen, I've even is come prepared it? and I've got some sellotape. Have we got a sound effect ready? A sound effect <laughs> twinkling or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does that make me your glamorous assistant? <laughs> yeah. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to slash into this. This is why it's called um, slash and spread or cut and spread. Look at you. I'm cutting that line there. Do you Isn't see? Isn't that what you do when you're making sandwiches? Yeah. You slice out spread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've cut up to the apex, all right? Mm. What will happen, just quickly, is the apex at the moment is right on the bust point, yeah? Yep. Now, it's not flattering to have that unless you want Madonna cones. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I was thinking that. So, once we're happy with the pattern and the position of the dart, we'll move that dart away from the apex at about an inch, two and a half centimetres, <laughs> right? And that just stops the point being right where you don't want it to be. It's more flattering. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. We can talk about these things. No, I know. I'm being really chatty. <laughs> no, it was more. I, I was thinking through the Madonna and just thinking back to. Oh, I know what you're saying, thinking. The whole kind of take your eyes out. Yeah. Right. I'm cutting down one of these lines of the dark leg, and we're going to do the same on both. All right. Yeah. Now I'm. Just going to that apex, but I'm going to leave a hinge in the paper so I'm not cutting it out completely. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, now watch the magic of this. If I spread, or I'm actually going to bring it over here, right, and I'm going to line that up, mm. my shoulder line now looks like a shoulder line that we're used to seeing, yes? It does. And I've opened up, do you see a dart here? Yep. That's more like what we're used to seeing, isn't it? Yes. Right? So all I've done again for you, I've cut that line and on the line that I made, and that line could be anywhere, and then I've just overlapped it onto that pattern piece, 
And now I've got it overlapped and lined up, I'm just going to take some tape. Um, there's a your assistant, I should be helping you. Yes, thank you very much. All right, and I'll have a little bit more up there as well, that's fine. This is like at Christmas when we're wrapping presents. Yeah, that's enough. I think I'll do a little bit on okay. the back as well just to secure it. Wonderful. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. It shows you how to do this in the book and it shows you how to move this dart any which and way. Then, and then do you have that dart there as well? Do yeah. You, does that come together? So that comes together now and we're going to have something that's 3D that's not coming from the shoulder. Yeah? Do you see now I we're getting the do. shape? Obviously, we've got the waist dart, which is going to give it more shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Fabulous stuff. All right. Now, you could have it just like that if you wanted. Obviously, at this point, if we're going to keep it like that and we're happy, I move the bus point mm -hmm. an inch away from the apex. So I'd move it an inch that way. Because I don't want to look like Madonna circa 1985. That's the one. Unless you do and then keep it where it is. <laughs> so an inch that way away from the bus and the waist dart as well this one that's called mm -hmm. the waist dart an inch down understood yeah that is magic yeah i'm not finished that is magic right so what i'm now going to do is just do one dart very often we just see one side bus dart in all of the patterns pretty much that i demo on here mm. for ladies mm. it's that one bus dart but so i'm going to slash up to here Again, it is a funny word, isn't it? Is it a band slash? Oh, I think he was the lead singer. Oh, yeah. Slash from, was it Guns N' Roses? Yeah, it feels like something like that. I'm not that up on it. Right. So Alison's emailed in to say, I agree with you, Stuart. These days, I can't get away with Madonna poke your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure. No, I can't either. <laughs> make, I wouldn't be comfortable. Make sure you move your boss point. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Right, okay. So <laughs> we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to swing this over. Go on then, you do it. Till the lines join up. Yeah, that's it. And I'm going to tape it. Yeah. Tape, tape, tape. That's it. I done dressmaking. You done dressmaking. <laughs> I done dressmaking, didn't I? There, like that. There you go. You see? And now I've got a pattern piece where we've got the bus start in the side. Now that's a lot bigger than it was. Yep. So that makes it fuller. It does. Yeah? Yeah, it's really clever. Now bear it's in mind really this making is, sense. Yeah, bear in mind this is quite fitted. Yes. This is a fitted bodice block. So if we were wanting to add more ease, again, you'd be referenced in the book for that. And mm -hmm. that's a bit more in depth. But I want you to just get the basic principles mm. for now. So then... Have another little flick. Yeah, have another flick through. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. Now we're at that stage. What I thought was absolutely fascinating um, was all of these. The, the, the dart manipulation, I think, is fascinating. Because, of course, as a quilter, my job is to make everything as flat as possible. Yeah. Whereas a dressmaker, my job is to make things three-dimensional. Exactly. And that's all about shaping the fabric with darts, is 100%. And this is what we've just done. And then you can move it in a number of ways. But ultimately, pattern making is ultimately dart manipulation. Really? That's, yeah, that's what it comes in down to. In its basic form, and putting it simply, it's, it's about moving those darts to create a 3D shape from flat. That's what it's all about. It just breaks it down, doesn't it? Yeah. And I suppose, look, if you get your 10 metre roll of pattern paper, you draft your block to the right size yep. and then you reproduce that yep. lots of times and you've loads of paper in that roll. And then you can try out all the different dark manipulations yeah. to see how it changes the yeah. shape. Am I right? Yeah, that's that how exactly it. it. That's how it works. It'll change the style of it. Yeah. Say if I wanted, I mean, this is going really complex now, but if I wanted gathers, right? I'd be adding fullness into it. Now, that's a bit more complicated. That's further on down the line. But again, it's about moving the dart and adding fullness. Mm -hmm. But what you must do is make up the block that's most appropriate to your bus measurement and then get your calico and make a toile. Make any adjustments on your toile and transfer those from your calico toile mm -hmm. to your pattern piece. Because it might be that the bus point is in a different place. <laughs> Look, just as so much he's got the calico. Useful? This would be very useful. This is the bolt. Now, we've got it by the half metre as well, but this is the best value. We've got a bolt. This is 25 metres of 60-inch wide pre-washed calico. So this is soft, drapeable. Um, it's not going to shrink. 
perfect for making your twirls. Absolutely. Um, and it's essential. Price. It's essential with pattern making, essentially, to make a twirl. We also make a twirl anyway. Mm. If you're comfortable with a pattern company and you know a size, I don't know, 14 from that company always fits you, perfect, fine. You get Lucky it, you cut you. it. Yeah, well, that's what I mean, yeah. yeah. But you cut it out, you make it, and that's it. But a lot of the mistakes people make is either with a new a pattern company or you know, not doing a 12 first. And you don't have to make all of it up. You know, with this, I would say yes. But in some instances, you know, if you're doing a trouser, mm. we don't have to do the whole length of the mm. leg unless you really mm. wanted to. The the bit where the fitting the is, waist is and where, hips. yeah, the waist and the hips is yeah. what you need. And the seat. I mean, it's like yes. I was just sort of smiling then because I was thinking about knitting. Uh, you know, and all we ask you to do, all we're asked to do, is a four-inch square <laughs> to test your tension, to test your gauge. Yeah. How honestly, hands up, how many how many of us do it? I don't know. No. There you go, neither do I. And I paid the price so many times. I've knitted the garment yeah. and it doesn't fit. I know. Make the twirl. Yeah. It'll fit you. Yeah. Twenty five meters. You save twenty four pounds fifty on this. It's already an amazing deal, but you save twenty four pounds fifty on the bolt which mm -hmm. means you've always got calico ready now if you want it by the half meter we can do that it's still the 60 inch wide it's still pre-washed beautiful how much would you need would you say to get you started um, if you were just doing the bodice bit two meters would be more than enough okay you know four units two and a half meters yeah yeah at 2.99 a half meter it, it's just it's not worth not doing exactly yeah and if you go for the bolt, like you said many times before, that stuff dies lovely. Calico yeah. is so universal. You can use it in lots of different projects. Yeah. And to be honest, if you're serious about pattern making, or maybe you're getting this as, book as a gift for somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, then or that as a trio, the book, the ruler, and then I suppose the calico, you, you're well away. Because you're going to want to try and draft up all of these things. Yeah. And to be honest, it makes sense to a degree on paper if, if you know what you're looking at, but until you do that and make it 3D and you only get a real sense of it in fabric, which is why you've got to do the twirl, mm. that's when it really makes sense. And it makes more sense when it's on you and you're fitting it. Now, talking of on you and fitting yes. it, it is... Uh, uh, requires a certain degree of flexibility <laughs> to be able to do it on your body. But if yeah. you've got a mannequin, yeah. so much easier. So we've oh. got two mannequins on the show. This one right here is called Olivia. Now I'm just going to lift. Okay, go ahead. Now this is a Just to Forms official website. This is Olivia. Two hundred and twenty-four pounds and ninety-nine pence. Now uh, we are not. We're already starting below that. Here's our start price, and we're going to put the. This is the medium, two hundred and fourteen ninety-nine. So we're already really competitive on price compared with the just to form. These are British manufactured. Uh, amazing quality. They are the company, aren't they, are just a form. But we're going lower. We're going lower. I'll tell you the sizes in a second, but this is the price you're going to pay for Olivia. That's a 15% saving under 190. I mean, actually almost 100. 181.90 from 240.99. Hannah, just remind me, what's the actual original selling price of this just a form from a just a form? But from a just a form? 240. 49, 224.99, 224.99, and from us, 181.90. Uh, you've got the leg option for trousers or the center pole for dresses and skirts. Uh, amazing, amazing. Professional, it's available in four sizes. Now, obviously, we're showing you the medium here. You've got 12 thumb wheel adjusters, so you can adjust the chest, the waist, the hips. Um, you've got your hem marker as well. You can do trousers because you've got that offset column. You can adjust the neck as well. So if you're doing black, you can adjust the length of the body. Really so adjustable. 
absolutely amazing model this and also actually it comes it's got five casters on the bottom there you can see them that can all be locked so you can move it around your sewing room or keep it stable uh, absolutely fab now here's the size chart remember at the moment the details are on screen for the medium could i just have that on the other screen please bigger on the big screen is that possible no just on the bottom screen um i can read that actually the medium so this adjusts bust from 39 to 47 waist from 32 to 40 these are inches of course hips from 41 to 49 back length from 15 to 17 inches and a maximum height of 75 inches now that equates to a uk dress size 14 to 20. that's your medium olivia We've got all four sizes available. They've all got that 15% saving of already uh, a competitive price. So um, jump online, order your size. You can see the size chart there as well. So that's Olivia. We like Olivia. We love Olivia. We love Olivia. We love Olivia. We're not doing that one. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, all right. We love Olivia. We like Olivia better. Torn between two lovers. <laughs> Right. Right. Shall we crack on and do an, yes, another please. bit? Yes, I could go with something quite advanced. Do it. Shall we do it? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So this block here, I've had a lot of Blue Peter moments this time. I'm quite proud of myself. So the block that I've just moved the darts on is this block here now. I've redrawn it out, yeah? Okay. One of the most common adjustments that any female will have to make on patterns is probably a bust adjustment, mm -hmm. more commonly known as the full bust adjustment. Yes. It can be a small bust adjustment as well, or abbreviated to FBA. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd go through, if I can, the basics of it. Yes, please. Right. And I've got one done. I can show you here. This was a phrase I heard a lot in the workroom on Sewing Bee. Yeah. And it meant nothing to me. And it, and it can be intimidating. Very. If you've never done it and it's, oh, oh, you don't know how to do a full bust adjustment then. It's that kind of vibe, but actually... No. It was the in crowd knew what they were yeah. doing and I hadn't got a clue. But That's you can it. just learn this from the book. You can learn this. Now, the book gives it much more simply than I'm going to show you. The book just basically says to split it in four parts and move it apart, which is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. basically but i'm going to show you a bit more in depth all right so i've got some pieces here and i'll draw the lines in a moment but effectively what we want to do is add more fabric over the bust if you need a full bust adjustment all right mm -hmm. i don't want to add any more to the shoulder i don't want to add it to the neckline so it's it's pointless or just to the side because that's not going to be good i need to add it in the middle where the apex is mm. so find your apex even if you hold the pattern piece up and and put where your apex is and mm. that's going to become your the point that we work to and we're just going to slash and spread Can I, ask? I know this is a bit of a sort of personal question but would that be with or without a bra so you want a good fitting bra for this or, or what you're going to wear with the garment. Yeah, a good fitting bra. And that's a really good Got question you. to ask. Got you. So I'll, I'll talk us through it. But basically, so you can see the end result. What we're going to do is we're going to spread the pattern like this. And I'm just going to move that down here. Do we see I've made the dart bigger yep. to account for the fullness? Yep. I've also put some extra fabric in here. And I'll talk about how much in a minute. And I've also lengthened the pattern piece. Because, of course, it will come out and down. Yes. Which create, because, actually, if you don't do that, and I've seen this, I've seen this in my own dressmaking, where the front of the dress, for example, comes up. Yeah. Because it's going over a three-dimensional shape. Yes. More at the front, less at the back. Yes. And I, got, and I got marked down for that. And, of course, I understand why now. Yeah. But do you see, we're doing it this way, and as I say, it's, it's simplified in the book, just opening it up like that. We're not actually changing the length of that line. That hasn't changed We're at not all. altering the shoulder seam at all, because mm -hmm. the common mistake is when pattern drafters and where pattern companies were getting into, tr not trouble, but what would happen, 
and sometimes you find it in ready to wear is that they assume that because you've <coughs> got a larger bust that you've got a larger shoulder as well right well no no the likelihood is that your shoulder isn't any different it's just that you, you have a fuller bust or if i go the other way a smaller bust we would overlap it and is it kind of the same but in reverse yes the other, oh, yes so, exactly that. once you do it with paper it all makes sense yeah. doesn't it it really now, demystifies this is it most pattern companies draft to account for it's usually a b cup we talk about this a lot don't we um some do it for a c or d cup how to determine whether you need a full bust adjustment is taking some measurements so you take your um, full bust measurement, yeah? So across the fullest part Apart of your bust. Across the fullest part of your bust, and then take your upper bust measurement, which is, uh, I'm not, have we got Olivia? Yes, let's grab Olivia. Let's get Olivia involved. And this is, again, why it's this important to have a mannequin. Moment. Yeah, but this is, you need to be able to see where, where I'm doing. So I'm doing, the upper oh, bust would be here, yeah? Yeah. See where I've put the tape measure there? That's the upper bust. So it goes down at the back. It's not, it's not, yeah, there. It's not taut, it's well, not there across the, the back. It's, so it's under, so it's under at the back and then above. That's it. And then you, you so we've done the full bust and then the upper bust. And then you're going to take away um, one from the other. So you take your full bust and minus the upper bust and that'll give you an amount. Yeah. Now, if that amount is five centimetres or less, you probably don't need a full bust adjustment. Mm -hmm. Clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, if it tipples over that five centimetres, then we're going to say, yes, you do. All right. So say... He's the, good, isn't he? He's the, quite straight, but he's good. Well, I'm trying to be clear. No, he's... Because it's... It's, 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 um, it's good stuff. It's, it's hard stuff. It's not easy stuff, but no. if we're clear with it. So say, for example, the difference between your full bust and upper bust is six centimetres. That's tippled over. Yes, we need a full bust adjustment. Fair enough. All right. If, you, if it wasn't, if it was five or less... Yes. you still need some adjustment... Yes. What would you do then? So then we'd be going for a small bust adjustment okay. i suppose um if it's considerably less than five most patterns allow for that tolerance mm. if it's a small bust, then we're going to be doing the same in reverse and doing a small bust adjustment and overlapping by an amount okay let me show you the full bust adjustment and then you'll mm. get the idea and it's basically you know the same in reverse and there's a little bit in the book as i said right so here we are so six centimeters Let's say we need um, three centimetres more fabric than each side because we're only working on half. So six centimetres is the difference between full bust and upper bust. I'm going to half that because I'm only working on half of the bodice. Yes, Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So basically this gap here, yeah, where my finger is, guess how much, many centimetres that needs to be. Is it, is it three? It's three. <laughs> You're a good student. Yeah. Is Don't... this all in the book? Not to this extent. Okay. Not to this extent. It but how to do a full bust? It, it shows you to, base, it puts it down to its fundamentals, right? So if I was teaching it, teaching it very simply, it says to cut it in quarters. So from here, hinge it there and kind of here, and then just open it out to, to what you need. That's what it tells you in the book. You because mean. you've got me. Yes. And I'm here. Which is I'm, a bonus. Well, some may say an endurance. But. Massive bonus. <laughs> I thought this is a perfect opportunity for, sh for me to show you this. So can I ask then, so this distance here would be three. Yes. This distance here is three? No. no. So the only measurement that we need to worry about is between there. Okay. And everything else, once you've got that at three centimetres or however bigger, that's doing what it wants to do. Oh, Let of it. Of course. Right. This piece is just to length fit. So all we do is bring that down to match it so up. It's in line. In line. Exactly. Yeah. Adam, you... Oh, the master. No, hey, isn't no. that cool? There's isn't videos that cool? on this. Don't you just love it when the penny drops? All you've got to do to do it, look, quickly now, because I know we're going to be running out of time and we've got, we've got loads more projects. You can use all sorts, but I've got my ruler out again. I just need a straight parallel line to the centre front, right? And let's call that line one. Then I want um, a, a line between this dart, directly between, yeah? Let's call that line two. Yeah. Then I need a third line, all right, which is going to be up to the arm side or the armhole to put it 
as most people would think. Yep. And I'm going to put it just below where that notch is. That's a good place to put it, yeah? That's line three. And then I need a line halfway-ish between the bust point and the hem. Mm -hmm. And that's line four. So I've got those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, all right? Mm -hmm. You're going to want to save this for reference. There's loads of other videos out there. All right, I'm going to so cut with the best one. Just to make it clear, I've got my red sharpie. Look, it's a bit wibbly wobbly, but there you go. You've used your ruler. I'm going to cut that line first. Can we see that? Yep. Right, let's do it then. So we're going to cut in here. Obviously, I needed to cut this out as well, the whole pattern piece, but I'm just showing you the principles to get to what I'd got there. Yeah, yep. I'm cutting all the way through. Leave a hinge at the arm there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the second line I'm going to cut is line number two. So you kind of, line one and three is one line. Mm -hmm. Line two, cut and keep it on a hinge. Don't want to cut all the way through, so just to it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the um, last line I need to cut is line four. And you can completely cut that off. Now, what I should have done before, Rand, let me quickly whiz round. Sandra says, hi, Stuart and Adam. Wow, Adam, you are brilliant in describing and showing how to do adjustments. Thank you. I've ordered the book, but the paper has sold out. It has, Sandra, but we always get it on reorder. We'll get it back in really soon. Keep checking. Yeah, but he is absolutely amazing, isn't he? He's amazing. Um, we really, really did... Uh, strike it lucky when no. Adam walked into our lives. We did, Adam. You you're an absolute, what? you're such a star. You really but listen, are. do you know what, what it is? I've read books. Yeah, yeah. And I've looked, I've watched other people do it. YouTube, You've done the time. Good thing. No, no, but what I'm saying is, if you want an introduction to mm. pattern making, then buy this book because mm. it's a steal at that price. It is. You'd be stupid. And you said as well, sure. work through it. Because yeah. you have done that too. This is what I mean. You've done the time. You've worked through these exercises. Yeah. You've practiced. You've seen what happens if. Yeah. And that's what we need to do at home when we get the book. Yeah. I've done this a bit in reverse because I got a bit excited. You'd have cut this bodice out first and then done the stuff that I'd have done with the lines. Sure. Make sense? Yep. Right. Okay, cool. So there you go. I've now got, do you see what I what I'd showed you initially, the one I'd prepared? We're at that stage now. And then all you do, so we say that the difference is six centimetres, I need three centimetres. If the difference is seven centimetres, it'd be three and a half centimetres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever, um, so full bust minus upper bust, and then whatever the difference is, you're going to halve it because we're working on half of that. That's the only bit do of maths you've got to do. put this back on top of yes. the paper and then redraw? Yes. And then, so we're constantly sort of refining our pattern. That's it. Till it's more and more and more our shape. That's it, exactly. So you take your pattern paper. I've got some here. Are we, are we all right for time? I'm conscious. We've got about five minutes, Adam. Five minutes, we can do that, we no problem. All right, so we're going to put this on here. Have you got my tape? Mr. Yes. Tape. Yes. Mr. Tapey Wapey. That's it. Great stuff. So you're going to tape this down on here. Yeah, lovely. Plenty of tape. That's I know my place. Taping this. Right, before I tape the next bit, I'm just going to take that ruler, or you can take a tape measure or whatever. I'm just going to carefully now measure. Let's say, for instance, it was three centimetres. Mm -hmm. Have I got my centimetres there? Yeah. So I'm just going to make sure that gap there can everything nice and flat is three centimeters mm -hmm. yeah so we can and take take, take that. that down that's it so here so there was a difference of six centimeters i'm working on half of the body so divide that by yeah. two so that gives you three centimeters and that is just three centimeters there so you were saying as soon as that lays flat, we yeah. know that that is, that everything else kind of naturally will fall where it's yeah. supposed to. As I say, that three centimetres could be different for you. It could be the difference is seven centimetres yeah. between full bust and upper bust. So that'd be three and a half. Yeah. And I just need to do that. Just one bit of tape there. You just lower that down in line with the hemline. So you've lengthened the bodice as well, do you see? I don't know about you, but I've just had a masterclass in how to adjust patterns, <laughs> don't you think? What a superstar. Well, full bust adjustment. There's loads, loads yeah. more. But that is probably the most common one. 
and, 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 it, and it's one that has a bit of mystique in if you've never done one before and it can so, seem hard. like here, yeah. do you just join the lines up? Yes. So then we do something called truing. Truing. Right, OK. So what I'm going to do here, let's cut this out now. I'm going to start to cut can it you out. you do it in 60 seconds or less? Yeah. You draw the line there. Yep. So you carry that line on. Yep. I'm going to true this dart. True it. True it, mate. <laughs> if it's still available, grab the book. Honestly. Is the book still available? The Essential Guide to Pattern Making. Well over half the stock has gone and we're expecting a big rush at the end. Should be fifteen ninety nine. It's eleven pounds and nineteen pence. Even at fifteen ninety nine it was a steal. But at eleven ninety nine, I mean that's a come by me. Just brilliant. So I'm just bring, I'm just no, I'm no, I'm just no. bringing that dart up there like yep. you'd sew it. Yeah. And then I'm going to cut that line. This is really rough, oh, so I do apologise. Once I've done that, that will give the shape of the dart. Sorry, I've done that really roughly, but it'll Makes give sense. like a witch's hat. Makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, because I'm rushing. Clever, 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 clever. Full bust adjustment. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Very, very well done if you've got the book. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Adam. Thank you no, so much. Thank you indeed. Brilliant. Thanks for having uh, me. Right, we need to do the menu, and also I need to announce the winner of the Janet Clare competition from yesterday. Ooh. So, here's the menu. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, it's Vix, the new Sewing Bee book launch. Oh! Ha-ha! At 9 o'clock, they're back. Pat and Mark from Totally Patched are going down the garden path. That could go anywhere. At 10 o'clock, Quilting Tools. At 11, Pat and Mark are back with the Totally Patched Sampler Quilt. And then at 12 o'clock, it's Quilt Backing and Wadding. Now, who won the Janet Clare piece of artwork? This is what the winner gets. And the winner is Anne Everson. You're a winner, Anne. You You're are a, a winner. winner, baby. Anne Everson. That is a prize money cannot buy. It really can't. Uh, this book is going absolutely wild. You watch the demos. You know you need it. It's 11.19. I've got fewer than 40 left. Be quick on your checking out. I will be back on Friday. Vix tomorrow. Have a great couple of days, and I will see you just before the weekend. Bye. <laughs>Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com 
where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not only is Hobby Maker available live from 1 until 8 p.m. on Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Sewing Street. It is wonderful to have your company. I'm Stuart Hillard. This is my new shirt. I is it okay? I'm not sure. I love it. And then I've seen it on camera and thought, do I still love it? Do I look like I'm about to do a few rounds of darts? I'm the lucky. It's Stuart Hillard. Um, anyway, it's lovely to have your company um, on this National Cheese Ball Day. I'm not making it up. It's also Banana Appreciation Day. So let's get our appreciation in for bananas. Now, much, much more than that. Let's get on with the show and our early birds. <laughs> Now, our early bird, everybody needs this. Everybody needs this. This is a four metre bundle of cream solid fabric. It's beautiful, Rose and Hubble, great quality. 30 pounds and 32 pence. Not today, let's get straight on with it because this is a fabulous bargain. It's under 25 pounds. It's 24 pounds 32 for four meters of Rose and Hubble cream fabric. Here it is. It is a lot of fabric. Now, if you were to buy, for example, something like maybe a strip roll, yeah, jelly roll, strip roll, or a layer cake, something like that. With four meters of cream fabric added in, you could make a queen size quilt or a king size quilt. It, it absolutely expands what you can do with your pre cuts or maybe some half yards, absolutely exponentially. Lots of you multi buying this. What a brilliant option for backing a quilt. <laughs> this is. Wild. Uh, normally we do smaller bundles, four meters. This is amazing. Look, here we go. All of this, all of this. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's all twisted up. <laughs> oh, it's like trying to fold a fitted sheet. It's nigh on impossible. Look, all of this, it's still going strong. Absolutely amazing deal for under £25. Now, Rose and Hubble, beautiful quality cotton fabric, high thread count, uh, got a beautiful smoothness, gorgeous kind of luster to it as well. Brilliant as a background for appliques. This is your background fabric for piecing. You know, I go to cream ivory, these sort of lovely light creams all the time for country style projects and 
you know, Christmassy projects, whatever it is, cream always seems to do the trick. Also absolutely fantastic for things like your bag linings and um, backing cushions, quilts, table runners. I mean, what a brilliant buy. Also, of course, you can dye this fabric. You could do shibori, a little bit like my shirt, this is shibori. You could um, do things like tie-dye. You could use it as a base for embroidery, for beading, for painting, ink tense pencils, you name it. It's so versatile. That's why everyone who's checking out is checking out multiple quantities. It's absolutely going wild this morning. Let me say a few good mornings. Claire, good morning, Stuart Noel. Pam, good morning, lovely. I love the shirt. Thank you, my darling. Me too. Ryan's got in touch. Good morning, Stuart. How are you? How are you? Loving the shirt. Uh, 180. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheeky. Susan says, morning. It's a blue shirt. What's not to like? Well, exactly. Every time I go shopping, Charlie says, oh, what have you bought? A blue shirt. How unusual. <laughs> Mo says, morning, handsome. How's all the new uh, Bairns, uh, pleased to have you back. Thank you, darling. We actually finished lambing yesterday. Our last two ewes had their lambs. One had a single, one had twins. They're all absolutely doing wonderfully well. We are overrun. <laughs> we are overrun, but they are so bouncy and gorgeous. I'm thinking about calling the twins Charlie and Hannah after our producer and director today. Chris is on floor. Uh, we're having a, a wonderful start to the day. <laughs> They're making little jokes in my ear. Our early bird today, four metres in one continuous piece, Rose and Hubble cream fabric. It's sold out. It's sold out. We'll have to get rid of it. Morning, gorgeous, Stuart. Just grabbed my early bird. Wendy, you've got yourself an absolutely fantastic bargain there. Let's start with the menu and see what kind of day we've got coming up. So this first hour, it's fabulous fabrics. I am launching a brand new collection from Macawa. It is super, super cute. It's called Foxwood. And it is beautiful. You're going to love it. I've also got some amazing Sanderson fabric and some beautiful panels. Now, at nine o'clock, I'm joined by Yvonne Makatamni from Village Fabrics for Impressions of Japan Month Three. Where is this time going? Where is this year going? I can't believe we're month three already. It's April. Goodness me. Um, that's already on pre-order. If you want to grab the next month, you can do it. If you want to get started with Impressions of Japan, we've also got January and Feb, well, month one and month two available. Now, at 10 o'clock, Adam Brooks is here bringing his own special sparkle with the Sussex seamstress Selmston jacket. It, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. I tried this on this morning. It's unisex. It's really cool. Beautiful. Quilters, you're going to love it. Dressmakers, you're going to love it. You can quilt your own fabric. You can use pre-quilted fabric. Um, yeah, fab, you could do patchwork too. 11 o'clock, we've got a brand new launch from Yvonne. It's called Marbled Windows. It's beautiful, fusible applique with a kind of stained glass window effect. It's really lovely. Look at this. It's like the rose window in York, isn't it? And that, remember Blue Peter, the Blue Peter appeal for the rose window. That's taking me about, was that 1984? Uh, you weren't born, Chris, no. Nobody was born apart from me and Queen Victoria. Uh, then at 12 o'clock, Adam is back with the Essential Guide to Pattern Making book. Now, this was a sellout before. If you missed out, today's your chance. Also, Adam is going to be going through all the basics of how to use the block, how to draft darts, how to move darts, how to manipulate patterns. It's going to be a real learning hour. Absolutely terrific. Now, that's not yet on pre-order, but as soon as it is, I will let you know because I know you're going to want to jump in there because it's sold out before. Um, I will keep you posted on that. Right. OK. Uh, how to shop. How to shop. 